Time, Gromit. Another perfect landing. Your turn to make breakfast, Gromit. Eggs, I think. And toast with honey today. Step to it, lad. I'm famished. Eggs, toast and honey. I can practically taste them already. Silicon flowers, Gromit. A major contribution to our modern lifestyle. Did you bring the mail, Gromit? Oh, well, oh no, final demand. I will know this payment due now and a disconnection. Nothing but bills, Gromit. I can't look at these before I have my breakfast. If we don't find some steady customers soon, I don't know how we'll make ends meet. Oh, all right then. I'll open one, but just the one. Hmm. Seems your subscription to Marrow Growers Monthly is up for renewal. Don't suppose you'd consider cancelling? Thought not. Oh, better pay up then. Now, where did I put me pen? Ah, yes. Ouch! Well, that's a fine way to say good morning. Honey pipe directly from the source. Everyone in town will want their own honey tap when word gets out. Sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> but where are the eggs and toast? Hey! Eggs today, Gromit, not porridge. The living room's out of bounds for now, Gromit. Had to use it for storage. Only temporary, mind. We'll need those crates once the orders start pouring in. Hi, O'Connor. 
Yes, Anil here. Sorry to leave a message, but it's about that incident in the shop. That blinking mechanical mouse of yours has put me in a right pickle. I mean, it may be a sniffer 3000 with advanced cheese tracking capabilities, but it chewed through all me fancy tail and me red lister too. Now, I know we've always been on good terms, but this morning I find myself not inconsiderably discombobulated. And I can't let it happen again, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say that with the deepest regret and following police advice, you and your blinking contraptions are barred from my establishment until further notice. Still no breakfast? I'm beginning to suspect foul play. Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. But I'm still one egg short of a breakfast. I suppose I should at least pay the wool bill. Hey! That dog is getting a little too independent, if you ask me. That grommet was the sound of my belly. It's saying what I'm too polite to mention. Breakfast is late. 
cracking eggs, Chuck. Now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Morning, Wallace. May I have a word? Um, uh, if it's about yesterday's, uh, um, little mishap. Oh, no, you see? I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Penier, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happen. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from me to you. <laughs> ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to U has landed its first major order. 50 gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. They're certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. Flowers. The perfect meal for a hungry hive. The remote control for my Sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teething problems. Still, this might come in handy. I don't want any accidents on my shop floor. Uh, bon appetit. Oh. Hmm. Not exactly a flood, is it? Hmm. Flowers, Gromit! That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. Keeping busy, lads. Yikes! Ouch! Blinking egg! Ah, there's the hatch from me rocket ship. Remember that moon holiday, Gromit? 
My workers are very devoted to their queen. That hinge is awfully loose. I'll have to see to that. Now where can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? Beautiful morning, Mr. Wallace. I'm pleased to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. Been doing a spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flit? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean, I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well, now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flit. Here, you can jolly well grow your own. Uh, right ho. That flower hasn't bloomed yet. I know it hasn't, the lazy thing. Oh, but the way will be worth it. Oh? This flower will be the piece de resistance of my purple paradise. And the scent, absolutely heavenly. I'm simply mad about the purple pansy. That's a healthy looking, uh, what do you call it? Foxglove. If you want to grow them, you've got to know them. Such a fragrant bouquet. <clears throat> I say, those roses look appetizing. Uh, if you're a bee. I'm sure they do. And they smell <laughs> heavenly. But they're not here to be trampled over by your buzzing bees. Have you noticed? I put a new roof on Mr. Nutter's house. Mr. Nutter? Surely you're acquainted with our neighbor, Mr. Nutter, the squirrel. Uh, I'm not on first name terms with any of the neighborhood animals, I'm afraid. What about Gromit? Oh, no, he isn't either. No flowers in here. There now, with hard work and a little luck, you should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. No, oh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm. If it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Groating, Energize, Strongium. Well, I need a miracle, and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Oh, 
caught you. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon? Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your nearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that, but Major Crumb, are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know I've made predictions before, but I'm not crying wolf. This time, I've got proof. A jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move. Does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail, but what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day, and that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Loaded in France during the war. Never wrong yet. Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail. You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. Ah! This case is packed full of government issue protein bars. Protein? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for... Emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. You've come buzzing back, Mr. Wallace. As a bee to a blossom, eh? I realise this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's... Uh, uh, oh. A snail? In my garden? The sky is blue, and still it rains on yours truly. I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. That's the racket Gromit used when he took the cup at the Brambleton Open, K-9 Division. Mmm, last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale.
Phew, that'll put me right to sleep. This core box has been a boon for Gromit. No matter where he is in the house, he's never far from his master's voice. Spanier here again, just checking on that honey order. Almost ready, I hope. This year's festival of crumpets could be the best yet if your honey's as sweet as you say. So sorry I had to ban you and your inventions from the actual premises. Spanier, produce. Uh, hello, Mr. Panier. Honey? Oh, smashing. Just smashing. It's a honey of an order, all right. <laughs> uh, what was the quantity again? Fifty gallons. Fifty gallons. Fifty teaspoons would be easier. You won't let me down, will you? I don't want my respected festival of crumpets turning into a bad crumpet rumpus. Oh, no, Mr. Paneer. Certainly not. Uh, goodbye. A nice cup of strongium tea ought to spark up the old grey matter. Hey, bring that back, you thieving rascal. Hold on a minute. Strongium. That's one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's quick-grow muscle formula. I need that tea bag. Hmm. Running a bit low on Wensleydale. Awfully long drop. Toast. Shame to let it go to waste. Wallace! Thank heavens you made it to the shelter! I'd given you up for lost. Caught in the crossfire, were you? Nothing like an inspirational poster to boost worker productivity. For some reason, my boys aren't terribly fond of this one. Any breakthroughs on the honey front, Gromit? I see you've met Private Gromit. Fine soldier, that lad never speaks out of turn. What's the news from above, citizen? Chaos and destruction? You've got to get your mind off the carnage up there. Would you like to hear one of my old war stories? I'd help pass the time. Well, I hate to... Uh... Ah, of course you would. I brought visual aids. <clears throat> what a face! That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. A spiffy who found me on a battlefield. I thought you might find this useful, Major Crumb. A helmet! By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. <laughs> 
and I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, if I had a sturdy helmet, which I have, but I couldn't go into battle until I'd been officially recommissioned, and I'd need to find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the protein bars. <clears throat> Who's that fellow? That's me as a young recruit, off to basic training. How I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Dashed useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never go into battle without your dog tags, Wallace. So that's where the dog tags went. I'm sure Gromit will be glad to get them back. You see, Private Gromit, I told you he'd make it back to us alive. Our Wallace is a fighter. Bagged a few of those blighters, did you? I found these in the hall, Major Dog Grumman. tags. I've been recommissioned. Bound to happen, of course. Can't leave good military material sitting on the shelf. My place is in the treasures. By thunder, I'm a soldier again. Sir George is ready for his dragon. And yet, duty compels me to remain here. No one else to guard the protein bars. Confounded sense of duty. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of Grootine bars to a Pongo? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. Good heavens! I shouldn't be skulking around in a cellar like a frightened rat. I'm a soldier by thunder. Private Gromit, I hereby appoint you officer commanding this air raid shelter. Here, you pass out the rations. I've got a war to win. Charge! That anti-aircraft gun gives me a fantastic idea for a new invention. Now to get my hands on a protein bar. Gromit! Stop playing around, Gromit. Of all the... Oi, come back here, you thieving rascal. That's my tea bag. I won't have you threatening that dear little creature. Not while he's in my garden. You're persistent in your attentions this morning, Mr. Wallace. Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. What are you looking for, exactly? Back again, Mr. Wallace? I'm flattered. Perhaps you'd like to give the purple pansies a sniff. You'd have to, uh, lean over, of course, but... I see no point in leaning over and sniffing my purple pansies. I'm giving them the cold shoulder until they decide to shape up and bloom for me.
Ah, Mr. Wallace, Mr. Wallace, I've got something for you. Much obliged. That looks like... Can it really be cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Vensleydale, your favourite. And am I to take it that these are... Yes, free samples. Go on, duck in. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. Have you come to deliver my order? Uh, it's not quite ready yet, I'm afraid. You're not going to disappoint me? Not after yesterday's little incident? Oh, no. You can count on from B to you. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. Pity it's closed. Oh, I could murder a sausage roll or two. Now that's a fine looking post box. It would make a good chassis for my honey powered vacuumatic, but that's tomorrow's project. Business. Could those be? Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberly. Ah, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies. Always been partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. Ah, blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lemon, you moaning mini. Ah. Look what you've done, you clumsy old. And open up that window when I'm yelling at you. All right. <laughs> well, only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? Pardon me, Mrs. Gabberly. I wonder, uh, that is, could you spare a... Verb. Uh, sorry? Give me a verb, Wallace. An action word. Oh, uh, playing a word game, are we? In a manner of speaking. Oh, well, let's see. A verb. Chew is an action. Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. Now I need a thing. A thing? Aye, you know, something physical you could touch. Something I can touch. Toad? Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Greasy. Oh! Oh, that's a corker, that is. <laughs> Last one. Nearly done. I need another thing. Or like a person or animal. A person or animal. Hmm, now, let me see now. Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Oh, chew! A toad, you greasy grub! Cute little bleeders, grubs! Used to keep one as a pet. <laughs> Named her Edwina. A good solid insult, I thought. But maybe we need to think different. Uh oh. Hey, it's not closing time yet. 
That was a, an interesting word game, Mrs. Gabberly. Want to play again? I need a word, Wallace. How about cheese? It's one of my favourites. No, an action word. Oh, yes, an action word. How about the verb to stew? Fine, that'll do. Now, a thing, if you please. Right, a thing. Toad? Why not? Now, a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Pruny. <laughs> You're good at this. And finally, a person or a thing. A person or a thing. Turkey? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Oh, stew! A toad! You pruny turkey! A turkey? Oh, the king of birds! He's proud of being nasty. That's the problem. But maybe that's his weakness, too. You've got quite a vocabulary, Mrs. Gabberly. Another round now. Give me an action word. What about batter? Fine, that'll do. Now, a thing, if you please. Right, a thing. Mouth? Why not? Now, a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Spotted. That's a descriptive word. <laughs> You're good at this. And finally, a person or a thing. A person or a thing. A gentleman? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Oh, butter! Your mouth! You spotted, gentleman! Referring to me liver spots, are you? Beauty marks, I call them. But gentlemen, oh, that's hitting below the belt. Abuse just bounces off him, the old blowhard. Maybe we should take the opposite approach. Well, I suppose you're busy. Don't go, pet. I need your help. Now, give me an Action word. Pop is a nice action word. Fine, that'll do. Now, a thing, if you please. Right, a thing. How about stew? Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? <laughs> You're good at this. And finally, a person or a thing. A person or a thing? Gentleman? Yes, that's a thing. To wound a block, Winnie. Eee! Ha ha! Got him!
save that time. Serves him right for being such a grumpy old granddad. Would you mind, uh, if I, uh, that is, could you see your way fit to lending me that pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, for business purposes? Business purposes? Well, be my guest. I've got bunches of them. Well, if it isn't Wallace. I had a notion you'd be nosing round the police station this morning. Uh, what morning, Constable Dibbins? You're off to an early start today. Not planning any more visits to the shops, are you? Oh, no. Yesterday was a one-off. I'm in town on business. Is that so? Must be awfully hot under that helmet, I reckon. A sunny day like today. It's a trifle sweltering, yes. But danger and discomfort are all in the line of duty for an officer of the law, though most folk don't appreciate it. Me poor Sniffer 3000. I only just put the finishing touches on it yesterday and it's already fallen afoul of the law. I, I I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes, and I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. We're only appealing for natural justice. What your blinking cheese detector thing of me, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that in its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Gibbons. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified tin can of yours, and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. Look at me when I'm done. Blasted impertinence! We've had our little chat. And? I'm afraid there's no talking to your sniffer. Hardwired for criminality, I'd say. There's Miss Sniffer 3000, banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine, just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energite? It seems to me, yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Pro Muscle Formula. I used my last Energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula. The sniffer's just trying to get to the cheese, but the machine sounds like it's crying. Oh, almost brings a tear to my eye just watching. How much does a helmet like that weigh? Eight pound and five ounces. Some days feels more like 80 pounds. Can 
Can you see fit to grant my appeal, Constable Dibbins? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. Couldn't give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it. It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. Time we had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Cheeky blighter. No change, I'm afraid. And its moral compass seems to be badly malfunctioning. How long do you intend to hold my Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins? As long as the law requires. It's not malicious. It just malfunctions from time to time. Is that so? And sometimes it short circuits when it gets overheated. Perhaps it does. Why, why don't you try uh, uh, talking to it once more? All right, once more. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. more like it. Now you've had time to think, what can you tell me about what happened yesterday? Feel bad about what you did, do you? He's weeping. Maybe this contraption's got feelings after all. I want a truthful answer. If I release you from custody, will you do it again? Well, I'll be damned. The prisoner has been interviewed. Yes. And having exhibited signs of repentance, I am prepared to release you into your protective custody. Provided, Wallace, you give me an assurance that you'll keep your blinking eye on him. Or it. Or whatever he answers to. Oh, I'll keep an eye on him, Constable Dibbins. You have my word on that. Miss Flint, if you'll just take a look at the pansies, I think you'll... I told you, Mr. Wallace. I refuse to let those yellow hooligans have the satisfaction of... Oh! <laughs> oh! You see? They're mending their ways. They just needed a firm talking to, that's all. Mother forgives you, you naughty little pansies. Sweet satisfaction. Action, Mr. Wallace. Yes, indeed. Very sweet.
request dispensation of grotein bars, uh, soldier. Mixomatic will be perfect for whipping up a tasty growth formula. One unit of energized fluid for a creamy finish. One dose of strongium into the mix. <laughs> One generous chunk of protein to give it texture. Now to mix up my very own quick grow muscle formula. That ought to do it. No, the mixomatics all mixed up. Stop! Stop! Help! Drum it! Oh, thanks, lad. Checking to see if anything's sprouted yet, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, Miss Flit. Really? I don't see what you're hoping to... Oh! I don't believe it! It works! It works! The homemade quick road miracle muscle formula works! We're in business now! You see, Gromit? Look where a bit of enterprise can get you. If I hadn't found that flyer you chucked in the bin, I'd never have been able to concoct my miracle grow formula. And then where would we be? You really must be careful what you chuck out, you know? Uh, Lincoln, Nora! Oh, my word! I think I'm going to faint. <gasps> This ought to be plenty of fuel for the old pollinator. The magnetronic pollinator is the linchpin of the operation. My workers get their rations mechanically. No foraging in flower beds for them. That's champion, that is. Fifty gallons of honey and just in time for my annual tea and crumpet festival. Pleasure doing business with you, Wallace. Always aim to please, our bees. That's the last of our bills, Gromit. And we've got just about enough left over for that little holiday we've been planning. This year, I fancy... Blackpool. Oh, oh yes, lad. I think our money troubles are over at last. Air raid! Air raid! Battle oh stations everywhere! Not this again. Excellent vantage point. Prepare for a crash landing, you devils! Sorry, Wallace, but I'm going to have to commandeer your dining room. Uh, now, just a minute, Major Crow. No time to argue, old man. The whole town's under bombardment. But here they come! <laughs> An egg from it. Giant bees! Heaven help the good citizens of West Wallaby Street! Civilians out! But that's an order, Wallace! Private Gromit, kindly escort this civilian from the battle zone. That's right, soldier! Help steady my aim! Most another bounder! Go! 
Not the blatter! Blast it! Back in the air! Devil blast it! Behind me! Bullseye! Into the dustbin of history for you, my friend! Right where he belongs, the fiend! Try getting out of that one, fly boy! For Queen and Country, soldier! Good heavens, Gromit, you don't suppose those monsters have anything to do with our honey-making operation, do you? Bumbling egg! My quick-grow formula! It didn't just affect the flowers! Just hope it's a wrong number, and not more bad news. Private Grummet, it's looking grim out there. Good man, Private Grummet, help me bring these blighters down. Bullseye! the sky. That'll teach them. A thrilling sight for you, Private Gromit. Why, I feel like a young man again. Calls for a celebration, Private. Meet you in the mess in 20... Mr. Paneer, uh, well, of course you're upset. Being dive-bombed by giant bees isn't good for any business. 
that we're doing all we can to get the situation under control, uh, normal honey service will be resumed as soon as possible. Uh, with normal sized bees, that's a promise. There's a giant fly in the soup, lad, and it's shaped like a bee. They're taking over the town. Time to read the riot act. I am their employer, after all. They won't listen. They're completely out of control. This funny business has a sting in the tail and no mistake. Oh! Do something for me! Hello, from me to... Oh, Constable Dibbins. Well, well, of course I'll try. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Just a minute. What's this? to me. Nice doggy wuggy. I'm trapped in this tree by giant bees. Do you understand? You must take a message to your master. I need him to get me down from here. Can you tell him that? Oh, wait a minute. Give him this. It's a note. Tell him to hurry. I can't hold on much longer. I know, Constable Dibbin. That's nice, Gromit. In case you haven't noticed, we're in the middle of a bee situation. I'm on the phone with Constable Dibbins. You can show me your artwork afterwards. Constable Dibbins tells me the West Wallaby gal has been neutralized. Is that your work, lad? Clever work. What's that, Constable? Oh, uh, yes. I'll tell him. He reckons you should take care of the bees in town if you're up to the challenge.
Yes, I know. I've got to look into that leak. Something seems to be blocking the downspout around the corner. But that's not my biggest concern at the moment. Get these bees over my shop, would you? Back again, pet. Nice to see another soul game enough to stand up to them bees. Even if it is, pardon the expression, a dog. Ooh, blinking Nora. Look at Mr. Paneer, shut up in his shop like a prisoner. And all on account of a few blinking bees. You don't see Winnie Gabberley chucking in the towel. Didn't close during the hedgehog riots of 72. And I ain't closing now. Besides, where would I go if I did? I ain't going back to it flat with old man Gabberley. Not till he says he's sorry. Tossed out all me pansies, he did. Ah, Mr. Gabberley here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Well, fighting dogs come limping home. There now, weren't so hard, were it? Is that you, Winnie? Breaking code of silence, are you? No need for silence now you've shown a bit of humility. Humility? Me? Never. Oh, you don't fool me. You're just a big old softy, and I know it. Hey, I need me head examined, keeping shop open when town's crawling with giant bees. What's got into you, Winnie? Stay back, I say. Oh, Winnie Gabble. Careful with the auto flip frying pan, lad. The timer mechanism is very delicate. It's liable to spring at odd moments. Uh, I see. But, but the good news is oh, not bad. Over my shop, would you? For the delay, Mr. Paneer. I think you'll find the streets are now B3. Thank heavens for the boys in blue. Now, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the station. There's some paperwork we need to fill out. Nothing too bothersome. Happy to do my part. It's citizens like you what make my job a pleasure, Mr. Paneer.
you want. Off with you now. Very busy at the moment. Haven't time for inquisitive dogs. And tell that master of yours he left Summit behind. I know Constable Dibbins. Well, yes, like I said, he's very well trained. Right then. Goodbye, Constable. Good work, lad. Seems you took care of the downtown gang good and proper. But so long as they're still supersized, our job's only half done. I'd better get to work on a reverse growth formula. What's this, lad? An SOS note? From Miss Flit. Why didn't you show it me earlier? Hang on, Miss Flit. Help is on the way. Ow! Oh, it's no use, lad. The bees outside may be neutralized, but the ones inside are still buzzing mad, and they won't let me leave. It's up to you, Gromit.
You've pacified all the bees, Gromit. Good lad. I knew I could count on you. That's right. Poor Miss Flit is still trapped in that tree, isn't she? I'm coming, Miss Flit. Oh, it seems I'm underdressed. Gracious! Hang on, Miss Flit. <laughs> So that's the story, Miss Flit. I'm afraid my miracle growth formula led to some uh, super-sized problems. I hope you're going to get rid of the infernal stuff. Oh, I am. And rest assured, all the bees have been dealt with safely and humanely. Well, that's a relief. But weren't you scared, facing down an angry swarm of giant bees all by yourself? Frightened? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I was heavily outnumbered, of course, but uh, they soon saw who was boss and that the uh, sting was on the other foot. I was terrified. That's only natural, Miss Flit. Uh, uh, well, I had a twinge or two myself at times, you know, but keep a cool head. That's my motto. Look your adversary square in the eye and never let yourself get carried away. <laughs> trying to turn me into royal jelly. The ingratitude. After I built her a hive in sonic brass and a magnetronic pollinator thingamajig to take all the hard work out of honey making. Oh, I'm beginning to think I should never have mixed this growth formula at all. I ought to chuck it away. Hey, easy old girl. No need to get excited. Put me down gently and no one will get... Oh dear, nothing in the beekeeper's manual about aerial abduction. Help! Help! Grommy! Ladder boy, I knew you'd come through. Take the ladder, lad. What are you waiting for, Grommy? Raise the ladder!
Sold in one piece. More than I can say for the autopilot, I'm afraid. Look, the autopilot! Oh dear, looks like our troubles aren't quite over. Look out behind you, Grummit! Keep her at bay. I'll try and lose her in here. a little kick. Complication. about raining cats and dogs, our plumbing's in a right pickle. Fetch me my spanner, lad, while I stick me finger in the dike. Just the job. Bring it here now, will you, lad? Bring me my spanner, lad. Done. Our troubles are over. Whoops. Right, 
Jackie, that was a shock. Best trip the circuit breaker, lad. And stay clear of the water. It's electric. Lad, the tide's coming in. Best find another way to the circuit breaker. Romy, have you gone, Crackers? You'll get yourself electrocuted. Careful, lad. That's extremely volatile compressed rocket gas. Ex NASA. Don't do it, lad. You blow yourself to smithereens. Lincoln, Nora. Well done, Gromy. Poor be fixed in a jiffy. Just a moment. Turn to the right. And now it's safe to hit the light. That's better. Oh, there you are. Well, we'd best clean up. Crack on, lad. There's a lot to do. Sorry about the unseasonal weather. I'm afraid it means we'll have to put off our little trip to the seaside. Unless... we bring the seaside to us. Look here, we've already got a cellar full of water. Just a few more items. There we are. And we can enjoy the seaside from the comfort of our own home. Ho, ho, ho. Won't that be something, lad? We'll stay home for the holidays and have our own beach to boot. Lucky the rain's let up for now. I'll be back in a trice with all the necessaries. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming up. What are you doing here? Picking you up, lassie. We have a date. Surely you're not still thinking of the beach. It's freezing cold and might rain any moment. Ugh, a little wet never dampened the spirits of my biscuit. Grab your wellies and we'll be off. Duncan, I really don't think so. You must admit, it's hardly beach weather, is it? It's perfect beach weather. Nothing like a wee nip in the air to keep you sharp. But don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello there, Wallace. Come and meet Duncan McBiscuit. He's an old friend. <laughs> and of course, you know my two precious darlings, Fuji Woo and Tinky Wee. Say hello to Mr. Wallace, Angels. Uh, yes. Uh, look, Gromit, it's your friends from next door. Cute little fellows. Oh, yes. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. They're my pride and joy. Well, I won't keep you. No, 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 no. Duncan was just leaving. Leaving with you, lassie, for a day on the beach. But what if there's a cloudburst? I don't consider thunder and lightning very pleasant beach companions. But there's no thunder and no lightning. Can you hear any thundering? Any cracking or booming? Well, can you? Maybe I can. Just hush your tongue a moment, will you? Hmm. I'm sure Miss Flip won't mind if I take just one. 
You can't hear no thunder, can you? Not even a wee tinkle. I suppose not. Oh, come on, Felicity. We must act now before the flood. Gather the townsfolk. We'll stack the sandbags to the north, south, and east. Still time, if we hurry. Look lively now, soldier. No, 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 you can't dump these sandbags here. Just, just, just wait a moment, Major, please. Stop dithering, you dunderhead. The town's being swept under. There's now being swept under, Major. And you're beginning to be a public nuisance. Afternoon, Wallace. Oh, yeah. It's a stack of Stilton. Oh, was that the earth-shaking roar of thunder? Uh, well, actually, uh... It doesn't matter when it comes to the complex question of climate. A person should never really rely on his own senses. Only the experts really understand the weather. Oh? Quite a light, Mr. Paneer. It's a searchlight. I say, no shortage of candle power there. Right as the sun, don't you think? Wonderful for bringing in the big spenders. When the weather's fair, that is. I wonder, Mr. Paneer, where might a person acquire such a light? I'd be happy to lend you this one, but if the weather warms up tonight, I'll need it to advertise my super sore away sizzling summer sail. Oh. What's the latest cheese of the week, I wonder? Stilton. And that reminds me. I just sent the truck out with your delivery. When you return home, you'll find it waiting patiently on your doorstep. Ah, just like Gromit. You know, Mr. Wallace, there's nothing like coming home to a faithful, loyal cheese. I quite agree. Have a pleasant day. Two fine flavors that work well together. That's a nice sentiment. Hello, love. Afternoon, Mrs. Cabbally. Hello, Wallace. Lovely weather, isn't it? Well, uh, I... Uh... I'm joking, Pat. I know it's rotten. Had to cancel me holiday. That's a shame. Certainly is being stuck with old misery guts here. I heard that! He don't miss a word I say, except when I ask him to do summit. Ah, sitting behind a till all day ain't exactly hard labour. What would you know about hard labour? I could run this place a sight better than you, if I had a mind to. If you had a mind? What will it be, love? Looking for something to read? Take your pick. I'll put it on your slate. More rotten weather on the way tonight, they say. All set. Hey, make sure he don't nick any sweets. Mind your own business. That old misery guts thinks he could run this shop. <laughs> he couldn't run a bath. Chuck. I'm a constable answer. That's all the friend behind you. Uh, um. Yes, soldier? Out with it. Uh, well, uh, if you'd like to unload these sandbags, I know just the spot. Just as I told you, the people are pleading for sand, and we've got to give it to them. I'd like to give it to you, you loony old goat. But if you've got a need for sandbags, Wallace, I hereby grant you permission. Oh? You grant permission? Indeed. Take all you want, Wallace. Infernal cheek. I'm the commanding officer here, you jumped up, Jobsworth, and I hereby revoke permission. 
Can't you be cooperative just this once, Major? Cooperative? Don't know the meaning of the word. Sounds subversive to me. All right, Major, how about this? Why don't we ask Wallace here who's in command? This young Pongo? Hmm. Very well. Why not? Tell us, soldier, who holds rank here? Remember your training. We're waiting, soldier. Two fine flavors that work well together. We're talking about who's in charge, not flavors. Just a moment. Are you saying that instead of bickering over who's in charge, we should be working together as a team, like uh, steak and kidney? Uh, are you saying that in a crisis like this, we must act as one, like a well-trained commando unit? Actually, it's a sign... Exactly, a sign that we can now rise above our squabbles. Very well, then. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll send these sandbags off with you. Thank goodness. Well, I'll be off then. I can hear an hot meat pie calling me name. Yes, I can. Ernest Dibbins, it's saying. It's tea time. Fetch the blinking ketchup, Ernest. Now then, soldier. All I need is your requisition form. Requisition form? That's right. Got to play by the book. Can't let the spies sabotage operations, can we? Spies? Surely you've heard about the spies from abroad. They're everywhere. Don't look so rattled, man. Just bring me your requisition form, and you'll soon be neck deep in splendid sandbags. Oh, right then. A special order for 62 West Wallaby Street. Stilton. One of my favorites. I say, that's a handsome beach brolly. Perhaps you'd like to borrow it. You're most welcome. We won't be needing it as we're not going anywhere. Oh, yes, we are, lassie. Oh, no, we aren't, Duncan. You can borrow the brolly once Duncan and I have finished our little. Discussion. Ahem. <laughs> Ash, <clears throat> mind your own beeswax, you big boffin butts. Duncan, don't be so rude. I'll be sweet as honey when I'm buzzing round the beach with my best lassie. I won't be buzzing anywhere in this bitter weather. Duncan, we'll catch our death of. Ahem. <clears throat> You wouldn't go to the seaside today, would you, Wallace? You'd stay inside with a cosy cup of tea, inventing some clever thing, wouldn't you? It's certainly cosier indoors. Just so. Now, Duncan, it's time you were on your way. On my way? Felicity! I refuse to go out in a thunderstorm. Oh, that's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just put your bagpipes for a moment, will you? Oh, yeah, it's mouth-watering. Oh, my gracious! That's thunder, all right. And it's nearly upon us. Oh, but sure, it may be thundering, but... But did you see lightning? There's no lightning to bother about us, sir. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to stay out here with you waiting to be struck by lightning. I'm going to seek shelter, and if you've any sense at all, Duncan McBiscuit, you'll do the same. Good day. What? Oh. What are you looking at, Jimmy? Just borrow this. Just the thing for our cellar based indoor beach experience. Are 
Nice to see you, Wallace. Stormy weather ahead, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh, no. After all that, my sizzling summer sail is ruined. I go on holiday, but the weather's a washout. Will the sun never shine on yours truly? I say, I wonder where a person might acquire such a light. You're welcome to borrow this one, Mr. Wallace. There won't be any sizzling summer sail tonight. Not in this blinking weather. That's very kind of you. Always happy to help. Oh, ho, ho. this light'll make a smashing sun. I'll see you later. It's only for cheese, but give that here. Good heavens. Special orders deliver to 62 West Wallaby Street. You've done the service proud, soldier. Now stand clear. No time for chitter chatter. I'm needed in West Wallaby Street. Uh, uh yes, sir. Daisy, there we go. Top hole, all the sand we need. The Riviera, here we come. Great news, Gromit. All the goods have been gathered. Now it's time for some elbow grease, eh? To the cellar. Job done, Gromit. Time to relax on the beach, eh? We deserve a holiday. Just a minute. Such a lovely beach. It's a shame to keep it to ourselves when we could share it with paying customers. Just imagine West Wallaby Street Water World. A genuine beach house, complete with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement beach attraction. Oh, oh, we'll be surrounded by happy holiday makers. It'll be grand, Gromit. Honestly, what's the best of time? Your this man's ruining my blinking <laughs> holiday. Half a mind to take Ash, my book and spill it. Don't get in your oh. sandwich. I was only teasing. Just ask that great big pudding Shut there. Up. I ain't no pudding yet. These dogs are disturbing time. the peace. Bylaws state that all livestock must oh, be kept can't. under proper control <laughs> in public places. Fly, and they're not livestock. I want a refund. I want a refund and all. Refunds would indeed appear to be in order, Mr. Wallace. What do you say? Uh, uh, um. Well, here at West Wallaby Street Waterworld, customer satisfaction is our top priority. If you'll just be patient, I promise we'll have everything under control by supper time. Uh... You've got till supper time, no later. Not much of an holiday so far, I'm sorry to say. Mm, those mutts are a threat to public <laughs> safety. Stay in the shop and not to be tin fruit display. Calling my dears livestock. We can't afford to give refunds, Gromit. We've spent all our money doing the house up. This could be a financial disaster. What are we gonna do, lad? I never thought we'd have a house full of unhappy holiday makers. Bunch of moaning minis, if you ask me. I'm having a grand old time. Well, that's one satisfied customer, anyway. There we are. This customer relationship management isn't so hard, is it, Gromit? There's hope for our little venture yet. You'd best get supper started. Make it a feast to remember. I'll see to our guests. We'll soon have a house full of happy campers, eh, lad? Your searchlight is just what West Wallaby Street Waterworld needed, Mr. Paneer. Everything's satisfactory, I hope. 
No, not satisfactory at all. A certain Scottish gentleman has been deconstructing my constructions. Perhaps the management could have a word with him. I'm afraid Mr. McBiscuit is rather difficult to pin down. You've got to do something. If I can't finish my sandcastle, I'll have to insist on a refund. Your castle looks very handsome, Mr. Panea. Such charming little bucket shapes. I do admire creative artists like yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Flit. At least someone appreciates art and craft. Look, it's almost done. What do you reckon? Uh, very nice. That's the enchanted tower where the beautiful princess sleeps, dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. That's the horrible dungeon, where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. That's the royal court, where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. I should look in on our other guests. But I'm nearly done. Just one last touch. There. The perfect finishing touch. The mark of finest quality produce. E. Miss Flit's going to be impressed. Oh, hi. She'll be ever so impressed, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, whoops, my foot slipped, silly me. <laughs> my castle. Stomped on by a tartan heel. See what I have to put up with? A holiday's not a blinking holiday if I can't finish my sandcastle. Now I have to start all over. Hello, Wallace. Gromit's favourite. Uh, I trust everything at West Wallaby Street Waterworld is to your satisfaction, Miss Flit. We strive to satisfy. It's sweet of you to ask, Mr. Wallace. I'm having a wonderful time. All this drama swirling around me. But I remain an oasis of calm in the hurly-burly of holiday madness. Oh, glad to hear it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Enjoying your holiday, I hope, Major? Oh, yes, absolutely. Dashed comfortable billet you have here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, we strive to achieve complete customer satisfaction. That wasn't so hard. Put that thing down and pay attention. Oh. I am about to reenact one of the greatest desert battles of history, the Siege of Aqaba. Not many know the tale. It was late 1914, or was it 1916? It was an even year of that, I'm sure. On the one side was a single British soldier, T.E. Lawrence, better known to you civvies as Sir Lawrence of Olivia. On the other, the invading army of the Ottoman Empire, thousands strong. You know the story. Lawrence single-handedly defended a desert fortress from a massive attack. He had only one rifle and no ammunition. He was all alone. Just like this, Lawrence watched the enemy from a secret vantage point sheltered by enormous red boulders. <laughs> anyway, as the enemy massed, vultures began to circle overhead, crying out in their desperate thirst for blood. <laughs> anyway, now at this point your average Joe would have thrown in the towel and anything else he had to hand. But what do you think our Lawrence did? He took tea. <laughs> anyway, Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother. This isn't right. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy, and you can't have it. The battle isn't over. Ah, 
Hard at work, eh, Gromit? That's what I like to see. We'll soon have a house full of happy holiday makers, never fear. Oh, cracking idea, lad. Everyone loves a copper. You'd best attend to your pots and pans, eh? May I offer you a spot of tea, Major? Of course. Sharpens the wits. Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy, and you can't have it. The battle isn't over. You're in luck, my boy. I was just about to reenact the Siege of Akbar. Do you know the story? Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. <laughs> anyway, vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. <laughs> anyway, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> just like this. Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother. This isn't right. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. May I, uh, have a word? Oh! Um, later then. Crikey, the infrastructure's getting a lot of wear and tear. Trouble springs eternal, it seems. Very fashionable. Gloomy out there. <laughs> Mr. Wallace, I'd like a word with you if you please. Enjoying your stay at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, Constable? I'm this close to having your establishment shut down. Shut down? You heard me. These dogs are a public nuisance and an health hazard and all. Oh, dear. Went bonkers, they did. And all because I tried to clear away that horrible little toy of theirs. I don't approve of litter, you know. I believe Miss Flitter... I warned Felicity Flitter, no. And now she must face the full force of the law. I'm issuing a formal caution for the disruption of lawful quietude. It's the third I've had to write today. The third? Aye, the first two got eaten. Give this one to Miss Flit and tell her to remove her animals or I'll be forced to shut the place down. Gromit won't mind if I borrow this. This 
needs ironing, it does. Oh, I say, Gromit never reacts like that. Watch your fingers. They don't like anyone touching the toy. That seems to be in working order. Any interest in this? Perfect! Just like the great boulders of the Akbar Desert! Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy, and you can't have it. The battle isn't over. You're in luck, my boy. I was just about to reenact the Siege of Akbar. You know the story. Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. Just like this. Vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> just like this. Lawrence was taking tea and about to dunk his digestive when suddenly 10,000 howling Ottoman soldiers charged the fortress. Tea was ruined, obviously. But did Lawrence of Olivier give up? Never! He took his rifle and levered the great red boulders down the dunes, rolling them straight into the enemy horde. With the invaders in disarray, Lawrence, armed only with his bayonet, and still desperate for cover, counterattacked. He took them on one by one until he achieved total and complete victory. I'll just tidy this up. This little fella might enhance your sandcastle. A knight to defend the castle, eh? Why not? It couldn't hurt. Put him where you like. Just one last touch. There. The mark of finest quality produce. I can't wait to show Miss Flit. And I'm sure she can't wait to see. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my boot, my poor tender boot. It was a blasted soundtrack. Oh, 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 oh. Well, then. Should be able to work in peace now, I reckon. Oh, well, jolly good. Now for the finishing touch. The defender of the kingdom. However do you manage such lovely creations, Mr. Paneer? It's a knack, Miss Flit. If I hadn't made it into grocer school, I might have been an engineer. But of course, groceries are my first now. Ah, uh, anything else I can assist with? No, thank you, Mr. Wallace. You may consider me a happy camper and most satisfied customer. We do aim to please. Hello there. Oh, you like this, Wallace. I've been longing for a new look, and I quite fancy this one. Very incognito, don't you think? My own babies wouldn't recognise me in this get-up. 
Uh, I'm afraid fashion isn't really my forte, Miss Flick. Nonsense. What man is immune to the allure of a well-dressed woman? Would you like these sunglasses? Oh, wonderful, Mr Wallace. Very stylish. I'll use these for my new look. It's going to be such fun. I have the glasses. I just need the scarf. Any interest in this? Oh, thank you, Mr Wallace. What a lovely scarf. Actually, it's a... Uh... Such vibrant colour and such a pretty pattern. It's perfect for my new look. My new look is complete. Just a moment. You're in for a surprise. Ta-da! What do you think, Wallace? Am I not mysterious? Uh, quite mysterious, yes. <gasps> oh, where's Felicity? Where did Miss Flit go? Uh... Here I am! <laughs> we do have fun, Wallace, don't we? Constable Dibbins has requested... Constable Dibbins is mistaken. Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee would never misbehave. They did seem a touch rambunctious. Oh, very well. Let's get this over with. Threatening behaviour towards an officer of the law, that's a serious offence, that is. Don't think I won't lock you up, cos I will. This is your final, final warning. I didn't throw those mutts in the kennels. I were this close, I were. You can only push PC Ernest Dibbins so far. I hope your holiday is proceeding in a satisfactory manner, Constable. Satisfactory? Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. Everything appears to be quite satisfactory, peaceful and in order. Thank you, Wallace. Champion, we're getting there. Anything I can do for you, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, dear. Oh, what a mess I am! But it's me own fault for letting that mangy McBiscuit get under me skin. Why should I care what he says? As me mum taught me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but silly names can never hurt you. Hey! Here comes trouble! Yeah, big fat pudding! <laughs> big fat pudding? Oh, oh, it's true enough, I know. It's about a shape for a beach holiday. Perhaps I should just get me refund and go home. Oh, no. That's kind of you, but it's no good. I can't be talked out of a mood like this, can I? Oh, well, I... Uh... Oh, it's a sorry old world, isn't it? Thanks to the bullies.
a sad thing. Too true, too true. You're a wise old owl, aren't you, Wallace? Glad you're here, Wallace. He happened to maybe knocking on. Too old for a beach holiday, that's for sure. Fresh as a daisy. Oh, I don't know about that. But it's ever so kind of you to say so. I'm feeling a bit better now. No, oh, I'm a making sense. Do you catch my drift? Sharp as a knife. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Hey, you're in a right mess, you are, Winnie Gabbley, and no mistake. What to do? What to do? There's nothing like a cup of tea. Aye, that's right. A strong cup of cures most ills. You're an exemplary host, Wallace. Oh, what do I know? I'm going soft in the head, aren't I? Sharp as a knife. Well, now, that's kind of you to say so, Wallace. You know what? Winnie Gabbley's had enough of feeling sorry for herself. So what if I'm a bit like a pudding? I've tangled with giant bees, I have. I can take care of a bullying McBiscuit any day. Thank you, Wallace. You've a right kindly way with words, you have. Uh, glad to be of service. I'll be fine now, Pat. Reckon I'll finish my story. Hey! Get out, you big fuck! Shut your trap, you tart and tear away, or I'll box your ears! Hmm, I do like a good book. No need for a refund, then. Oh, no. I'm as happy as Larry me. Oh, another happy camper. Ha-ha! At last! A house full of satisfied customers. Just as I predicted. I'd best tell Gromit to lay the table. Must compliment our host. I've had a cracking holiday. Oh, thank goodness for that. It was a near thing, though, wasn't it? Oh, smell those fish and chips. We can look forward to superior chow here in the office of Mayor Swan. Mm. The tableware doesn't seem to be in breach of any health and safety regulations. Enforcement's the key, of course. You smell like heaven, lassie. Did you buy a new perfume for our date? Oh, really, Duncan? That's just the flower in my hair. And I'm not sure I'd call it a date. Uh, um, uh, before we tuck in, on behalf of the management, that is, Gromit and me, I'd like to welcome you all to our new venture. West Wallaby Street Water World, the only holiday destination with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement uh, beach I have a few words to say myself. Raise your glasses. Raise them, I said. To a great day with a great lass, the sweetest sights I ever smelled. That's right, I'm talking about... Hey! Who turned out the... Ah! What's all this? Who's there? Hey, Bob! Think it, Nora. This is a rock doom. Is there a giant tail? Oh, my God! 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 Oh, Uh, 
There's someone here. Help me. I can't move. Huh? Who's there? Thank you. Whoever you are. I was this close to take my last breath. You found me just in time. I've located the victim. Mr. McBiscuit has sustained a nasty knock to the noggin and don't remember now about it. Happily, he will recover. However, aggravated thumping is a serious offence and I've no choice but to treat every one of you as suspects. Outrageous! <gasps> Would I never do Suspects? <laughs> Until our thumper is caught, Nobody leaves this house. Nobody comes in and nobody goes out. Not till I know the person who done it. I know who did it. Spies from abroad. Saboteurs from the South Sea. Thank you, Major. That's enough of your doolally chatter for now. Only cold, hard facts can solve this mystery. Solve this mystery? That's right. By the book. You know, uh... Burden of innocence and uh, proof of purchase and all that. That's our real investigations. Now, what's that contraption? My latest prototype, Constable. The Deductomatic Mystery Solver. Deductomatic? Is that what's been taking money out of Miss Irving's account? Oh, no, Mrs. Gabberly. The Deductomatic harnesses unused brain power to solve mysteries. If you're pointing the finger, Wallace, any accusation must be backed up by hard fact and proven according to the law. Well, I... Uh, that is, it should be working. Aha! Uh -huh, I've got it! All right, then. Tell us, Wallace, who thumped Duncan McBiscuit? Who done it? Who done it? Oh, that can't be right. We're waiting. Uh, uh, uh just a moment. Any idea who done it, lad? You wouldn't mind pointing him out, would you? was Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. <laughs> Two wee pups laying junk and low. That's daft, that is. Aye, <laughs> silly that. The very idea of accusing my dear doggies. How absurd. Aye, quite absurd. <laughs> Absurd, oh. eh? Nothing is absurd before the law. Here we go. It is the absurd claims the law takes most seriously. For if the absurd cannot expect justice and a fair hearing, then who among us can? He's got a point. We must treat this accusation according to the law. The law requires proof. Proof requires... Uh... Hold on. Proof requires three things. First... The motive. Why did the suspect thump Duncan McBiscuit? Second, the weapon. What was he thumped with? Third, a witness. Who can collaborate? C -c -c corroborize it. Uh, back up your accusation. Do you have a motive, a weapon, and a witness, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'll just recalibrate the inference ometers. There we are. What'll it be? Motive, weapon, or witness? Hmm, where to begin? Cracking! Now we'll know the truth. The truth about what? Uh, the witness. I've identified the witness. Good show. Tell us who witnessed, um, uh, uh Tinky Woo and Potty Wee assaulting Mr. McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Uh, 
Who would you pick for a witness, lad? My witness is Major Crumb. Yes. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! Not this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Good heavens! Hang on. No, there is a resemblance, but something's not quite right. That's that, then. Your witness isn't credible. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it was working. All right, that's enough of that. Everyone can go about their normal business, but remember, nobody leaves the house until the mystery is solved. Once I have the deductomatic properly calibrated, this case will be elementary, dear Gromit, elementary. In the meantime, why don't you uh, sniff up some clues for the deductomatic for process, eh, lad? You might start with the constable there. I expect he's got some juicy leads. I've got the suspects right where I want them. Written down on the official constabulary notepad. I'll crack the case with this, I will. It's got to be one of these three, but which one? Do you sense something, boy? Yes, I'll have a little chat with the Major. Perhaps he knows something he doesn't know he knows. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Are you having a laugh? Enough questions! We're wasting time! The spies could be signalling their ship. If they give away our position, we're done for! <sighs> All right, yes, fine. So tell me what these so-called spies of yours looks like. Don't mind if I do. It was dark. Dark as... A darkened room. Then the door cracked open, and I saw them! Swarthy little men, with sunken eyes and primitive tattoos, dragging Duncan's limp body. Sailors, judging by their uniforms, natives of the South Seas, I'd say. Stake my reputation on it. Did they look like this? No, no, no. Eyes more sunken, with heavy brows. That's better. Add nautical tattoos round their necks, and don't forget the uniform. There we are. A hint more menace. Just a hint now. Yes, now you've got it. Those are the villains I saw. Right, so this is what they look like, eh? Post that picture to every Jack Tar in the Navy. We've got to stop them before they make landfall. That's just what I'll do. The man means well, but he's a couple of bricks short of the full hod. Checking provisions, eh? Good military planning. Who knows how long that fool of a civilian constable will keep us cooped up? Best start rationing now, before panic sets in and we have to eat our pack animals. Or each other. Neat. 
took quite a thumping, didn't he? Can't say he didn't deserve it. Still can't leave him to rot all on his lonesome. Someone's got to tend to the great lug. He's coming round. Ugh, my head. Somebody stop the spinning. There's a whirlpool I'm in. Don't fret, Patch, you've had a nasty knock. Did you see who thumped you? No, but I can almost remember what hit me. The terrible weapon that laid me low, it's... You saw the weapon? What hit you? I, I think so. It was... Oh, I can't remember a thing. My brain's been boggled. Ooh, you've got amnesia, you have. Amnesia? Oh, not that, as well as a bang to the head. Is it fatal? Just take things step by step, Chuck. What's the last thing you can remember? Well, I was upstairs, getting set for a jump junior on slide, but something wasn't right. Them little dogs of Felicity's were underfoot, and they wouldn't have shut their yaps. Duncan McBiscuit doesn't take guff from yapping wee dugs, so I grabbed that bone toy of theirs and took it away. They didn't like it one bit. Oh, no! Best part was... When I squeezed the wee toy, it drove them crazy because it made this noise. This noise. Oh, what was that noise? I cannot call. My brain's turned to haggis. Don't fret, Pat. Just rest. It'll come back to you. Mr. Gabble is news agent. Now open for business. Is that a customer I hear? Oi, you want to shop here? You gotta follow my rules. Yeah? Take what you like and I'll put it on slate. Mrs. will sort out payment later. Got that? Oi, and don't nick nothing while you're about it. Blimey, that were easy. I don't know why Winnie makes so much fuss. Roll up, roll up for a rhubarb. It, the sound of the toy. Now I remember. Go on. Then what happened? Oh, I kept the toy and shut the wee doggies doing the slide. They didn't like that one bit neither. <laughs> I was having a grand time 
I wanted a wee picky to remember by, so I went down to that photo thingamajig. I struck a manly pose and I was... I was... Uh, oh, Crivens, it's all fading away. I'll be forgetting my own name next. Oh, don't get yourself in a twist, love. It'll come back to you. If Duncan gets his memory back, we'll get some juicy details of the crime. You shouldn't eat candy floss, Mr. Panea. Bad for your teeth. Oh, I'm not eating it. I just like having something to hold. You must try to stop worrying so. What? The thumper? Who knows where he'll strike next? I don't think there is a thumper. I think Duncan just fell over and wandered off by himself. He's a clumsy oaf, you know. Aye. He is heavy on his feet, that's for sure. He'll bounce back. He always does. It's Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee I'm worried about. Those silly accusations hurt their feelings. I just hope playing dress-up will lift their spirits. A new look is a tonic for the soul, don't you find? I'm afraid I don't know how to play dressing-up games as it happens. Doggy dress-up, silly. I just need to pick the right outfits. So many to choose from. Oh, oh, you found it. Good boy. Now Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee can play sailor again. Hello there, Gromit. Would you like to play a doggy dress up? I just can't decide. It's only you, Gromit. For a moment, I thought... Well, never mind. I'm sorry, lad, but if you want some candy floss, you'll have to get your own. I'm rather... attached to mine. of these suspects knows Summit, but who to question first? If I keep staring long enough, I'm sure I'll detect Summit eventually. Caught a scent, have you? Hmm, she clearly had a motive. And perhaps under that soft, knitted exterior lurks the soul of a hardened thumper. I must question her. You do admit you had a motive. He happened to dead, and I could have thumped him, buried him, and drowned him twice over since I've been down here. None of you lot seems worried about that, though. That can't be everywhere, Miss Gabberly. Not with so many suspects to interview. More important than tending the victim of the crime, is it? Look here. I can't stand around chatting all day. I've a thumper to catch. See that you don't leave the house. I just can't remember. Oh, that's no help. 
That's right. I remember. Go on. I was taking a picky, holding a stick of candy floss. Oh, I love that stuff, me. I got my hunger up. Just then, like an answer to my prayers, the gong sounded for supper. I came to table, and there I found heaven, my lovely lass, Felicity. I remember the fine, sweet smell of her, like... She smelt like... Um, Oh, blast it all. My nose is a blank. I cannot recall. Give it time, love. You'll remember. That's it. The sweet scent of felicity. How could I forget? I remember. I remember everything now. I'm cured. You've cured my ham knees. You cured me and... and... I oh, were a right numpty with you, weren't I? Still are, I reckon. But don't go weepy on me now. Tell me what happened after you sat down to supper. I was making a toast when the lights went it. My eyes were adjusting to the dark when... Thump! <gasps> who thumped you? Oh, I never saw who, but I saw what. The supper gone mallet! That's what hit me! The supper gong, Mallet? You sure, Chuck? Sure? Oh, aye! Look! Look what it did to me! Ooh! Me, that's a crime, that is. No wonder your mind's been a blank. What kind of person would do that? They should be locked up. You go back to sleep now, love. Get some rest. That's an extra fluffy batch. Can't do any harm to trade up. Just this once. Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Must be family-sized floss. Three little suspects. One of them's got to be the thumper. You can do this, Ernest Dibbins. What is it, boy? Hmm, his motive is clear enough. But could this apparently gentle purveyor of fine groceries be a Jekyll and Hyde character, perhaps? A vicious thumper in disguise? I must interrogate him. Candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you or did you not thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Just you watch yourself, Mr. Paneer, or I'll be watching you. Got it? Not another word. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I have to spin up another. I 
wonder what the best dressed dogs are wearing this season. Oh, what a nice present. That's a stylish look. I do admire those sunglasses. I suppose they're back in fashion. Seems I'm something of a trendsetter. You'd look lovely in lederhosen and a little alpine cap. So many choices. Ah, Gromit. You must know what the debonair dog likes. Why don't you help me pick an outfit for my precious darlings? Use your doggy fashion sense and choose your favourite hat, glasses and collar. Jaunty! Aye aye, Captain! Your very latest... Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this. Poochie Woo! Tinky Wee! Time for dress up, my dears. Oh, look at this. Hello. You found Mr. Squeaky. You clever things. I was afraid he'd never turn up. Now we're really ready for some fun, aren't we? Let's get dressed up. The poor things are shy. Would you mind leaving us alone for just a little while? Got to be one of these three. But which one? Eureka! I've got it! You sure this time, Mr. Wallace? I'll summon the suspects. Right. You have accused Felicity's diminutive dogs of thumping Duncan McBiscuit. To prove it, you need a motive, a weapon, and a witness. Where do you want to start? Of course. Now we'll get the facts. Get what facts? Uh, the weapon. I've determined the weapon. Well done. Tell us what, um, what you Podge and Winky T used to thump Duncan. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this mallet. Eee, you bang on the money this time, Wallace. I remember now. That's what it Duncan all read. He said so himself, and he's got the dent in his bonds to prove it. It all makes sense now. That's a maladjusted mallet, all right. Maladjusted? What makes you say that? Well, it looked all fluffy and pink and delicious. Underneath it were rock hard and not very tasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Finneer. It appears that the mallet is indeed our weapon. Well done, Wallace. You're on the way to proving your case, Wallace. We have a weapon. What's next? And the witness is... You've been Major Crum another go, are you? Oh, uh, yes. My witness is Major Crumb. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! Not this again. I think we've heard enough. 
Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Good heavens! That's them, all right. I'd yes. recognize them anywhere. Put those spies in irons. Don't oh, be silly. They're puppies. Dogs of war, more like. What war? Oh, there is no war. What? All right, let's let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? The main point is, the Major saw these two dragging away Mr. McBiscuit. Isn't that right, Major? It most certainly is. In that case, according to the law, he is a legitimate witness. The case against uh, them two dogs is coming together. The only piece of the puzzle left is the motive. Right, that's the one. What's the one? Uh, motive. I've solved the motive. Excellent. Tell us why. Uh, Wadgy Podge and Tinky Pink thumped Duncan McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Can you spare a motive, lad? I if you've got one, give it here. Nobody leaves the room until I say so. The motive is... Me? Really? What did you do to make the pups thump Duncan? Uh, uh, I'm not rightly sure. Uh, any suggestions? <sighs> Your motive doesn't stand up. Uh, oh, oh uh, perhaps I miscalibrated the conductivator, whatchamacallit. All right, that's enough of that. Move along now, everyone. I've deactivated your call box from it. Uh, never fear, I'll put it right after our guests have gone. I'm afraid our supper gong won't be seeing any more use this evening. charm of a sailor suit together with the glamour of the very latest spectacles. Let's call my darlings down and admire our work, shall we? Oh. 
Archie Boo! Tiki Wee! Archie, darling, come here so I can tidy you up. Sit still now. Yet, I think I've solved it. I certainly hope so. I'll gather the guests. The only piece of the puzzle left is the motive. And the motive is... Can you rustle up a motive, lad? The motive is this chew toy. Really? The pups are very attached to that toy. I know from bitter experience. Of course they are. Mr. Squeaky was a present from their mumsy. That doesn't make it a motive for hurting Duncan, though. Oh, yes, it does. Duncan stole the toy from them doggies. Told me so himself. He never did. Oh, he did. If Mr. McBiscuit did indeed take their favourite toy, that could well be a motive for thumping. But why would Duncan want to take Mr. Squeaky? The very idea is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Possibly. But on the balance of probabilities, spot on. I believe this motive meets the test of the law. Wallace, you've shown us motive, weapon, and witness. And according to the powers vested in me as an officer of the law, I now pronounce the case solved. Duncan McBiscuit was thumped by a mallet because of a stolen chew toy, the crime being witnessed by Major Crumb. The perpetrators of this evil deed were none other than the canine criminals Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee. No, it can't be. My darlings are precious, kind, insu wincy doggies, not hooligan hounds. I knew it. Wallace knew it. Put them in chains. Throw away the key. Batten down the hatches. Cabin doors to manual. All in a day's detective work. I really do feel fit. Ooh. Oh dear. Oh, look, lad. 
the drain must have come unplugged. That's handy. Oh, seems to have created a bit of a current. Help, Gromit! I've got that sinking feeling. We're all going down the drain! above. They followed their toy down the drain. Well, I'll give them one thing. They're dogged to the end. Welcome aboard, lad. Just a short jump to dry land, eh? Oh, no, drop it. I'm about to be flushed. Do something. Lad, you'll blow yourself to smithereens! Gotcha! Thank heavens, we've made it, Gromit! We're back on dry land! That's one you or me, pal. Um, I do hope everyone's had an unforgettable holiday! and that you'll consider visiting West Wallaby Street Waterworld again next year. <laughs> Romit, where are you, lad? We've got quite a clean-up job in front of us. No time for dawdling. Romit! Should do it, lad. Our brand new Infini flavor ice cream makers ready for business. Patent pending, of course. Its infrared taste analyzer can sample any flavor and turn it into a delicious ice cream. What do you say, Gromit? Fancy pushing the button on our inaugural batch? Wensleydale cream, anyone? Get it churn, lad. Just in time to be road tested in front of paying customers at the fair this weekend. And all in a good cause, hmm? Miss Flit says it's to raise money to rebuild the donk shelter. The poor pups have been homeless for too long. Imagine if you had no place to call home sweet kennel from it. 
Hmm, must be the breeze. Miss Flit says the strays have been making mischief all over town. On Tuesday, Mrs. Gabberley's shop was terrorized by a gang of terriers. No doubt they'll come to heel once they've a proper roof over their heads. I'm sure everyone will give generously at the fair to build them a new home. I can't be the only dog lover in town. Drinking Nora from it, wild dogs, stray scoundrels, mangy good-for-nothing mongrels mangling me machine. They must be some of the escapees. Oh no, the crank. Believer. The flavor engraver, the brains of our custom flavor scanner lad, it's been scrambled. The four-legged beans. I'm sorry, lad, but this is some serious damage. I suppose it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll tinker with the flavor engraver if you track down our filched crank and our lifted lever. And this cute one's going to need to be calmed down as well. Mind you, it'll take a month of ice cream sundaes to put things right if I can't patch things up. You've got to get them in order if we're going to have the Infini flavor ready for the fair this weekend. Come on, lad, you're a dog. You can reason with them. All that hard work fouled up by a few rogue whippets. It's really an ingenious idea, a custom flavor technology that makes sure there's an ice cream for everyone. You just take a sample of anything you fancy, insert it into the flavor scanner, and press the churn button. Gromit, this machine might not be completely cream crackered after all. Let's have a shifty. Afraid it's still a bit uh, discombobulated, lad. <laughs> Your old toy certainly did the trick, didn't it, lad? Oh, my, you used to be so attached to it. Took quite a spell to wean you off it, in fact. Now we can focus on getting this machine up and running. He swiped it again. Careful, Gromit. The Infini flavor motor is volatile without its crank. What's he got there, lad? I think he's helped himself to our valuables. I wonder if that dog's part of a canine crime ring. He's only got a taste for the expensive stuff.
any luck with the mischief makers? With a combination of infrared scanning and molecular chemistry, the flavor engraver can imbue our ice cream with any flavor imaginable. Dogs out! This mangy whippet is is ravaging my roses. Came hurtling out of your master's house with some sort of bone in its mouth. Hmm. Feeding the strays really is the last straw. Now he's gone underground, and Lord knows what he's doing to my roots. And where's Wallace when I need him? Are there no real men left in this world to protect a woman's property? Don't just stand there. Do something. You're a dog. Can't you reason with him? Morning, private. At ease, private, at ease. I'm sure by now you've received intelligence about the morale-raising ops this weekend. Should be a jolly old time. Like when Ensor used to come and rouse the troops, reminded the squaddies what they were fighting for. I remember being stationed in Algeria, and the association organized a whole day of fanfare. Unbelievable! There was Fatima the Snake Charmer, the ever-popular Monkey Toss competition, even a couscous eating contest. Which reminds me, I expect you to be at the fair when I display my digestive prowess. <laughs> the pie-eating contest, Private. You must have seen the sign-up sheet in town. Nobody will challenge the great Major, though. I shall be uncontested. They don't call me Cool Hand Crumb for nothing, you know. Those are my biscuits, Private, and very delicious they are, too. Can't share them with you, though. For optimal nutritional efficiency, today's soldiers must stick to their rations. So, no bicky-wickies for you, I'm afraid. Oh, tremendous flavor. Hello, Gromit lad. How's Mr. Wallace? Have you heard about the fundraiser? I've never been to a proper town fair before. What's this? A pie-eating contest? Crikey, I don't know about that. I'm trying to keep trim these days. Afraid I'll have to pass on the pies. Thank you, Gromit. Oh, 
Morning, pet. Out for walkies. Certainly a grand day for it. Anything I can do for you? What you got there, Chuck? A pie-eating contest. Well, isn't that festive? Me? Oh, I don't know about that. I, I do love the odd meat pie, but a scoffing contest? That wouldn't be ladylike, would it? <laughs> you trouble enough of being ladylike without a meat pie in your gob. Oh, do I? Tell that to Postman. He seemed quite taken with me this morning. It's only because he's got an eye defect. Oh, shut up, you curmudgeonly codger. You know what, Chuck? I will sign up for the contest. I think it's a splendid idea, and I plan on winning in a most ladylike fashion, naturally. Let's see. Oh, just me and the Major, is it? Hmm. He's no match for Winnie Gabberley. There you go, Gromit. I expect you to attend my victory party. Looking forward to this weekend's fair. Should be a riot. And all for a good cause to boot. Ah! Winnie versus the Major, eh? Should be a sight to see. Eating contest. Nobody's signed up yet to take on the mighty Major Crumb. Pity. I'd love to meet another man. Toe to toe on the field of battle. Mano a mano, feasting to the death until the best man wins. Edwina? She thinks she can out-eat the likes of me. Ho, ho, ho! That's a good one, Private. I'd love to see her staring down the barrel of a ketchup bottle. There's just no way she can win. Impossible. She could never. <laughs> These blinky biscuits. I've been munching on them all day. They're going to fill me up. Private! Attention! Get rid of these vile things. I've got to prepare for battle. My guts must be ready for all the pie I can throw at them if I'm going to crush that woman. She's challenged the wrong man. Battle stations! Are you? I hope you've a plan to get your little friend out of my garden. Hoogee Woo and Tinky Wee may have their mischievous moments, but they knew better than to rummage in my roses. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a man of action around here. Thank heavens the rascal didn't tear up my tulips. I don't know how I'd have coped. On it. Now you're just rewarding him for foul behaviour. Damage. 
Now be sure it never happens again. I don't want to see any more of your canine companions on my property. Do you understand? I suppose that lever does look a bit like an old bone, doesn't it? No wonder the crafty canine went and buried it. Give a dog a bone and into the ground it goes. It's their nature. Oh no. Did our fastening nut go missing? It holds the lever in place. It's a critical part of the apparatus, Gromit. Oh, this is no good, lad. That was my last number 12. What rotten luck. Look at that! He found our nut! Fantastic, Grommy! Eh? Uh, perhaps I was a bit hard on him before. I didn't know the little one had a penchant for tinkering. Oh, he's just afraid. Heavens above, he's a positively petrified pooch. Poor little lad, we ought to call him Twitch. And there we have it, lad. Uncrossed a few cross wires and our flavour engraver is as good as new. Now we ought to be back in business. Off we go, lads. Nothing can stop our Infini flavour ice cream from taking off now. Hmm? Bit late for the post, eh? Oh, hello there. Uh, can I help you? Oh, good heavens, no. The question is rather, how can I help you? Name's Muzzle. Monty Muzzle. Philatelist, philosopher, philanthropist, and purveyor of fairground amusement. I hope by now you've heard about Monty Muzzle's Save the Dogs fundraiser fair to be held this weekend. Oh, uh, yes, we have. Uh, Gromit and I were just... Oh, uh... glad to hear it. I was deeply saddened to hear of your recent tragedy, and I'm making it my duty as a dedicated and devoted dog lover to help you all raise the necessary funds to repair your canine shelter. Imagine all those precious animals out on the streets. A tragedy. What a shame for all those dogs. But Gromit and I might have the perfect contribution for the fair. We were just putting the finishing touches on our patent-pending Infini Flavor ice cream machine. Ice cream, you say? Ooh, who doesn't love ice cream? The creamy coldness, the satisfying sweetness, the profit margins. And our, our machine has custom flavor technology. Hmm. Its flavor scanner extracts taste molecules from any sample provided. We're able to make limitless varieties to suit any customer. My, that does sound impressive. Oh, bye, Mr. Walrus. I know a good money-making opportunity when I smell it. What do you say to this? With my financial firepower and your unique ice cream maker, we could put an Infini Flavor retail outlet on every beachfront from Blackpool to Bognor Regis. The world will be your Knickerbocker glory. Franchising. Do you hear that, lad? We could be ice cream barons. If you bring your invention to the fair and manage to make a hefty contribution for this most needed, um, uh, uh, oh yeah, dog shelter. It's a deal. Gromit and I couldn't be more excited. Oh, our in-house creamery assures us peak freshness. Speaking of the dogs, Gromit and I have come across three little lads who need new lodgings. 
Well, look at that. Aren't they the most precious things you've ever seen? My charity begins now, and I've got the perfect home for them. Yeah, quick-looking devils, too. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Willard. Walk is. Come on, you. Your new home awaits. Off they go, lad. Say goodbye. Be seeing you and your contraption at the fair, Mr. Wallace, and uh, be sure to bring your wallet. Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monty Muzzle's Fundraise Affair. It fair warms my heart to see so many charitable souls here today. So let me warm yours by selling you a handful of tickets. Available for a nominal fee, the proceeds of which will put a smile on the face of a homeless and abandoned puppy. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, them tickets is good for every attraction. You can fry your favourite food, take on a chicken in a game of wits, or ride the mighty muzzler. Every penny goes to charity, every ticket, in short, will wag a tail. I say, Gromit, isn't this a thrill and such a noble cause, rebuilding a shelter for your canine companions? Oh, your new chum must have dropped his toy in excitement. I bet the little fella's having a grand day out, probably never been to a fair before. Hey, that must be the remains of one of the flies that was blowing around this morning. Can't abide litter, so I tore it up and offered it as slips of paper to the punters. Here are some tickets, lad. Go and find your friends and have some fun. <laughs> Have a pie to enter, do you? Give it here, and I'll get to it in due time. Quite the turnout of entries I've got. Bound to find a master of ceremonies in here somewhere. No use sniffing about for a competitive edge. These pies are all absolutely disgusting. Didn't take you for the cheating sort. Willing to do anything to get ahead, are you? You'd cheat a little old lady out of a baking contest just to win your five minutes of fame as this afternoon's master of ceremonies. Then what are you doing, nosing about these entries? Keep to your own entry. But knowing what you filthy creatures are prepared to wolf down, I can't imagine you've much of a discerning palate. Go ahead, see what others have tried, and then go bake yourself your own pile of rubbish. Oh, yuck. There's no originality. I yearn to be transported with flavor. No use sniffing about for a competitive edge. These pies are all absolutely disgusting. Didn't take you for the cheating sort. Willing to do anything to get ahead, are you? You'd cheat a little old lady out of a baking contest just to win your five minutes of fame as this afternoon's master of ceremonies. Then what are you doing, nosing about these entries? Keep to your own entry. But knowing what you filthy creatures are prepared to wolf down, I can't imagine you've much of a discerning palate. <laughs> Strawberry rhubarb with cream. Uh, not a terrible texture. 
for a horrendous pie. Oh, look, strawberry rhubarb reminds me of me Auntie Mildred. And what an horrible old shrew she was, always force-feeding me with her horrid confectionery disasters. Oh, good heavens, what rotten memories. What do we have here? Oh, yes. Apple crisp a la mode, an old standard. Stench alone wants to make me wretch. Of course, me old dad, on the odd occasions he was home, would always demand an apple crisp. Reminds me of the manky old devil's musk. Couldn't get far enough away from him, if you must know. May he rot in peace. Was that kidney pie? Just like the swill they used to feed us during my national service. Bayek, those were terrible times. <sighs> Another type of apple crisp. Haven't anybody got any culinary creativity around here? I want someone to tickle me fancy, not torture me taste buds. Now, where was I with this filth? What a man! Selfless, heroic, charitable. Hello, Gromit. Enjoying the fair? Must be easy to enjoy such simple pleasures when you're a dog. Not knowing the pain of unrequited love. You just wander through life, sniffing and scratching your way to happiness, while I must endure the loneliness of living without a man worthy of my hand. Oh, but then there is Mr. Muzzle, raising all of those funds for our poor, homeless puffs. I've never seen such altruism in all my years. He may be of meagre means himself, but he's rich in other ways. Oh, and what a handsome partner he'd make. Certainly compared to the rest of the town's buffoons. Are there no real men here worthy of the name? I want someone strong, brilliant and brave to lavish me with praise. For instance, I had my hair done this morning. And did anyone notice? Not one of them. I'm sure Mr. Muzzle would have, had he not been so busy. But what does a woman have to do to attract attention?
hundred, fourteen, hundred, fifteen, hundred, sixteen. Hmm. Let's see. Count this row across. Assume that the jar is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Can't be certain. Hundred and ninety-four, hundred and ninety-five, one hundred and ninety. Oh, bother! I've lost count now. <laughs> Hello, Gromit. I'm sorry, I'm just ever so keen to win the grand prize. Normally, I'm very skilled at counting produce in his shop, so I reckon this booth is my best chance of success. I've entered 12 guesses already, and I know it's for charity and all, but these tickets don't come cheap. Back to counting, if you don't mind. Look at them all. Heaven knows how many there are in there. Muzzles, booth of accomplishments. She's smitten, she is. By him. Disgusting. Makes me so angry, I could blow me top. Ooh, I'm Monty Muzzle. I'm the most charitable, sensitive gentleman there ever was. I'm a blooming hero. Fair. Big pile of wet less, if you ask me. And what do you want, Mutt? Can't you see I'm working here? She wants a sensitive man, does she? Well, that's what Miss Flit will be getting. I'm composing her a poem. Near finished, too, except for the last line. Got the whole thing memorized, even. I just cannot write the ending. Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest law. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. Your haunches are sturdy. Your bearing is bold. Ah, I've got nothing. Look at me. Talking to a dog. Ah, going crazy, you are, McPiskey. Now, walk you off and let a man work. Don't leave your fate to chance. I in bulk. All right, yeah, create a clairvoyant codfish. Let's see what you have to say. <laughs> Cravens, what a bunch of rubbish. <laughs> Let's see if this fortune's got anything useful for my poem. 
Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Ah. That's no half bad, that is. I just work. I'm a blinking genius, I am! No need for these rotten lines. I've got a perfect one right here. Hello there, Felicity. Oh, hello, Duncan. You look ravishing today. Why, thank you, Duncan. In fact, I've written you a poem in honour of your astounding beauty. What? You've written a poem? Every last word. Really? Well, let's hear it then. <clears throat> Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest loch. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. Your haunches are sturdy, your bearing is bold, and your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. I don't know what to say. Brilliant, eh? Noticed my hair. I did. Oh, Duncan, who could have guessed you're so sensitive and attentive to detail? Aye, my rugged Highland handsomeness may fool some, but inside, I'm nothing more than a caring and loving lamb. Come here, my little sugar plum fairy. Caring and loving lamb that's been rolling around in the barnyard too long if my nose isn't mistaken. Oh, that's just my unique musk. Let's go down and stare longingly into each other's eyes. She goes, you! Ah, the missus says I need more mates, does she? <laughs> well, I've got the birds in sky and bugs on sill to keep me company. You won't find me making up numbers at some flipping fair. Good, because you're not invited. Here, yeah, birdie. Come to Papa Gabberly. like the fair's in full swing, I'll be popping over later to take part in the big contest. I'll have the Major quaking in his boots, I will. Hello. Yeah. 
Pigeon! Over here! One hundred and twenty, one hundred and fifty-one, one hundred and twenty-two. Don't think a little teamwork is against the rules, eh? Here, lad, you have a go. Sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-seven. Oh, good heavens. <sighs> I've lost my train again. There must be an easier way to do this. You're welcome to help, but it's my tickets that are on the line here. Don't think a little teamwork is against the rules, eh? Here, lad, you have a go. That seemed like it could almost be right, Gromit. Cross your toes, lad. These are the last of the tickets. Congratulations. You are the winner of a grand and fantabulous prize. My heck, we did it. Fantastic. We've won, Gromit. Congratulations, sir. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muzzle. But quite a bit of brain power it did. So... What's the grand and fantabulous prize then, Mr. Mosel? I must say, I can't wait to see what I've won. Yes, well, um, yeah, just as it's always better to give than receive, um, I say the satisfaction of your triumph, plus our undying gratitude for the charitable donation you've made towards our noble cause, our prizes in and of and um, by themselves, wouldn't you say, Mr. Panier? Chuck. Well, they're all very well, but I thought prizes that last a lifetime. Up here, and in here. But, but, but the sign says... Oh, quit bellyaching your big girl's blouse. <laughs> oh, um, it, it's hardly fitting for a gentleman such as yourself. Here, have a blinking bubblegum ball. But, but... Oh, all right. And one for the mutt as well. Now, where was I with this? Do you fancy a cone, Gromit? I don't think that would taste very good, would it, lad? I mean, 
fish-flavoured ice cream? Who ever heard of such a thing? Unless... You, uh, haven't made a new feline friend, have you, by chance? Oh, well, uh, yes, then. Uh, one fish-flavoured ice cream coming up. Uh, step to it, lad. I don't really fancy chewing gum. Coo! Coo! Hello. Hello, Gromit. Having a grand day out? Ah, disgusting. Uh. Yeah. Hmm. This looks a bit different. A familiar, flaky crust. My, my, my. Oh, could it be? Yes, this is more like it. What a belter this one is. Oh, a crisp outside with a warm potato inside. Oh, this takes me back to my days as a boy. But, but it, it, it's still missing something. Some key flavor from it past. Now, still, I'll, I'll hold on to your entry as provisional for now. If you think of something to give it that definitive je ne sais what, uh, come back and I'll consider it. Uh, till then, the competition's still open. Ah, a new addition to your shocking previous entry. I have no doubt that you almost certainly cheated, but without actual proof. I'll have to let that pass. Let's see how you did. Why, uh, this is, uh, yes, yes, resplendent. I've never tasted a pie quite like this. A savoury crust, enhanced by a one-of-a-kind flavour, if I am not mistaken, of lightly battered cod. Oh, yes. Your entry triggers deep, unhappy memories. Oh. I can see myself as a slip of a lad behind the counter in my mother's chippy. I'm the happiest lad there's ever been. 
eating complimentary portions of freshly fried North Sea cod and chips. Stupendous! How you did it, dog, I'll never know. But you've won. Congratulations. You're the first beast to become the master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest. I'll be meeting you on stage then. Time to get this pie-eating contest underway. Be seeing you on stage in two shakes of a dog's tail. Gather round, ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Our first order of business is to celebrate this fine figure of a dog as winner of the pie-baking contest. That's a boy, Chuck. I knew you could do it. Hey! <laughs> and to honour this achievement, Fido here will preside as master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest to commence shortly. I'm here. The Major doesn't stand a chance. Ha! I once ate a kidney pie the size of a Shetland pony, and I had room for dessert and coffee. Your starter's pistol, doggo. And now, I'd just like to say a few words. Where are me blinking notes? Mm, you were up here just a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, um... It's not every day that tragedy strikes a helpless town like this. But I'm most honoured to be here in your moment of need to help you all collect enough funds to rebuild the orphanage. Um, uh, that is, uh, the orphanage for lost dogs. And I'm delighted to say that I haven't seen such an outpouring of charitable giving among fairgoers since, well, since, uh, 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 since uh, uh, the great Lancashire earthquake of, uh, oh, let me see now, uh, uh, some, uh, yes, some years ago. I don't remember hearing about that. Ah, oh, dreadful it was. Teapots tossed from their cosies. Sheep shaken right out of their fleeces. Most dreadful indeed. So, keep up the good work here today and be sure to spend, spend, spend as our wonderful attractions as it's all in such a very, very good cause. Now, without further ado, uh, Colonel Crumbs and uh, Mrs. Gobbledygook uh, will go head-to-head -head in the pie-eating contest. Now, Mutt, pull the trigger. Bye, it's been a busy week. Just one good deed after another. First, I takes in three homeless hounds, then helps a town. Do gooders, cough up the cash for a noble cause. <laughs> yeah. And now I've trapped me a tricksy little trespasser. Now listen here, mutt. I built this fair up from a sweat of me brow and a pile of scrap. And if you think I'm going to let a molly-coddled mongrel chuck a spanner in the works, you don't know Monty Muzzle. Aye, your time on wheel comes soon enough. And being man's best friend, you wouldn't want to stop the ride and disappoint your punters now, would you? But until it's your turn, you can blinking well stay put. Oh, and don't start whining and yelping for help. You'll have my security system to deal with if you don't keep the noise down.
What's going on here? What's all the racket about? Oh, another blinking dead dog. The Workshire Welt hadn't even been for walkies yet. <laughs> Pity. Ah, oh, get off me, you filthy beast. Oh, oh. That will be an extra few hours pulling duty for you. No more out of you.
was slowing down already. Muscle, your blinking ride's not fit for service. Blinking engine must have, uh, um, <laughs> died again. Ah, there we go. Twitch, uh, Gromit was looking for you, enjoying the fair. Oh, uh, I see. You'd like to have a go on the ride? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, where the heck's Gromit? He should be showing you around. Uh, no, well, uh, I suppose I can take a break. Let's go. I don't know if they let dogs on board, Twitch. Steady on. I know it's not fair, Twitch, but we can always ask. E easy there, boy. I've got quite a bit of strength for a little fella. Blinking Nora. You mean poor Gromit's inside the ride? What happened, lad? Monty Muzzle? Heavens above. Uh, Twitch, you better stay out of sight. I've got to see about getting Mr. Muzzle to shut down his ride. Oh, yes, everything seems to be in order here. Nothing to report. Woohoo! That blooming Bobby has been up there for an hour or more and won't get off. He says he's carrying out an inspection, but he won't find anything untoward on any of my rides. Everything's above board here. Oh, uh, 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 of course. And what's that supposed to mean? Oh, uh, nothing. Your rides had a sort of mechanical trouble, I see. Oh, no, no, that, 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 that's nothing. Um, purely cosmetic. Um, the, uh, um, <laughs> Uh, inner mechanics still run like clockwork. Oh. Uh, had to institute a weight limit, though. Uh, don't want any heavy hands bringing things to a halt. No, of course not. A balloon. Always uh, good for a lift. Duncan, Miss Blit. What do you use, Wank Wallace? Well, I, I don't know how to say this, but. Ah, uh... oh, come on! Don't be it! Dog, let the poor man speak! I think Mr. Muzzle has dognapped Gromit. Dognapped? <laughs> oh, that's a good one! You mean to tell me the old Monty Muzzle, the charitable dog lover, and second most sensitive, caring man at the fair has swiped your mutt! Ha! Now that's right! Oh, uh, yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, but the... Really, Wallace? It's not very charitable of you to be spreading rumours like that. Oh, uh, 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 well, uh, never mind then. One last bite, and another pie is gobbled by Gabbily. The contest hasn't ended yet. 
Why, no, it's a last man... <clears throat> woman standing competition. Oh, who's winning? <clears throat> As if you had to ask, man. <laughs> by my count, the current leader by a thick crust is Mrs. Gabberly. Hogwash! Woohoo! Mmm! And I'm relishing every bite! Ah, I'm just getting warmed up! We'll see about that. Mr. Wallace, would you mind bringing Paneer this slip of paper here when you've a moment? Right, oh. Oh, yeah, look at these. The rest of me finished pies. The rest? Oh, my stomach told me I'd got through more than just these appetizers here. And Major Crumb has just learned that Mrs. Gabberly is in the lead by a most devastating pie margin. Oh, not feeling too tickety-boo right now. I... I think I might have been outpied by the enemy. And it seems the Major might be giving up, though he's only nine pies behind. Nine? That's it. I capitulate. I surrender. Hoist the white napkin of chronic pie fatigue. Yippee! And down goes the Major. Out for the count. And a boy, Mrs. Gabberly. Congratulations! Woohoo! Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you like pies, Veneers Purveyors of Peculiar Produce is open daily for all of your baking and pie-eating needs. I can't believe she beat me. I'll never be able to show my face in the officer's mess again. Never mind, Major Crumb. You guzzled gamely. Perhaps you just bit off a bit more than you could chew. Perhaps a man must know his limits. <sighs> the only thing that can lift my spirits now is a spin on that RAF ride, if you'll excuse me. Oh, I must have put on five stone. Excuse me, Mr. Paneer. Wallace, if you'd like a word, please come up on stage. Hello, Wallace. Excuse me, Paneer. Mrs. Gabberly wanted me to give you this. Ah, must be a message to read out for the fair. <clears throat> All attendants are invited to Vinnie Gabberly's victory celebration to be held later this evening at the House of Gabberly. Major Crumb is invited only if humbled by defeat. How could I have let this happen? Disgraced on the field of battle. Chock full of donations. But Muzzle doesn't seem like such the dog lover now. And remember, whether you want pakora, pies, puddings, or pomegranates, they're all available at Hanier's Peculiar Produce, just two minutes' walk from this fairground. Mm -hmm. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Oh, I've never abandoned Gromit. Too heavy? Balderdash! I was only on her this morning. Oh, just over our limit, I'm afraid, Corporal Crumb. You must have piled on pounds since then. That blinking contest! And I'm a major, don't you know? Aye, a major liability. So, you're banned, for safety's sake. Perhaps go for a jogger summit and work off some of that extra weight. Balloon, Major Crumb? Who doesn't love a festive balloon? Used to tie the old balloon to our knapsacks when we were in the long grass to distinguish ourselves from the enemy. Uh, perhaps you're ready for the ride now? You might be right. 
I'm feeling lighter on my feet already. Weight limit passed. Queue up. You'll be next. Smashing. It's about time. Time's up, Constable. Still carrying out the inspection, Major. Wait your turn. I say, cooey, Constable Dibbins. Can't hear you. Carrying out a safety inspection of this ride's facilities. Woo! But PC Dibbins, I'd like to report a. Oh, um, missing canine report. Can't be interrupted, Wallace. Whee! Paneer's Peculiar Produce, for all your favourite foodstuffs, and some you probably never knew existed. Oh, I shouldn't poke around behind any of Mr. Muzzle's attractions. Oh, no. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Well, uh, perhaps this one isn't for me. Your home smells of a patch of mold. Oh, we've the odd bit, I know, but it's not that bad. Uh, your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Oh, I've never abandoned from it. Hello, Wallace. Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Hmm. That's odd. Stop the ride! That's enough. Suppose I'd better get back to the station. Duty calls. Wahoo! Tucked away! Cabin doors to manual. Ready for takeoff. Blam! Major Crumb's carrying too much excess baggage. The ride's going to burst its seams. We've been hit. Oh, my giddy hands. Oh, my. Those poor ducks were trapped inside of that dreadful machine the Rob entire it. time. Rob it. Are you all right, lad? Where is that monster, Monty Muzzle? He was just here a moment ago. Up, up and away. Hi, what are you doing? What is that? It's Monty Muscle! And our money! And Twitch! Arrivederci! Monty Muzzle stock is on the rise! This is no time to jettison the cream, Gromit! We don't do floats! What'll it be, lad? One scoop or two? Oh, good show, Muscle, old chap. Not exactly what I planned, but a clean escape, nevertheless. A few quid, and one unexpected runt richer. What do you say, boys? Think we can find work for this emaciated mongrel? That's what I thought. Oh, Knickerbocker glory! He's got a head start, lad. We've got to find a way to close the gap. Somebody stop that balloon! Careful, Gromit. Those lead line tires are costly and they weigh a ton.
sure we've shed some pounds. I wonder what could have been that heavy. We puncture free lead line tires. Those didn't come cheap, you know. And how are we going to land without any undercarriage? <laughs> Look, we're gaining on him. We're as light as a feather, but Muzzle's balloon is still outpacing us. needs to be in place for churning, Gromit. No time for that, Gromit. arm had its work cut out with that much. <laughs> Things are getting a bit sticky back there. Direct hit, lad. Hey, <laughs> now he's up a gum tree. We'll catch him now. Knock up my engine, will they? I can still outrun them with the wind at me back. Hey, hey, they've run out of lift. Ah, sorry, my little twitching bag of bones, but no one's coming to save you now. Ah. Where do you think you're going with that? Eh, hey, fine then. Let go. Escape me, a flea ridden friend. Easy, easy. You've already been fed today. Ow! Get away! Stay away! Now, listen, chickens. has gone flat. This is all your fault, dog. Don't lose that arm, Gromit. Nothing a little glue can't fix. I've got to save what I can. If you want your master to take you for walkies ever again, you'll be very careful with that. 
careful, I said. No! My money! Oh, my beautiful money! Help! We're still falling, lad! Quick! We could do with some more air. It should hold us for just long enough. They might have flown too high and suffocated in the atmosphere. Happened to many a bomber in the war. And all to save a poor defenseless puppy. <laughs> Who would have thought Wallace was so selfless and brave? Aye, but more importantly, that blinking fairground felon still got her cash. He's due a salt in the mouth and a kick in the head. Honestly, Duncan, the last thing we need is more violence. We need heroes. Look, by Zeus's beard, what on earth is that? It's a giant mustache. Ah, oh, I've seen bigger. You're alive. Uh, yes, and saved by a whisker. Something of a close shave, eh, Gromit? Oh, ho. These poor pups won't go homeless after all, Gromit. Me and Mr. Gabley would be thrilled to take them in. No, we wouldn't. Pipe down, you misery guts. Great. Yet another mouth to feed. Three mouths. Oh, no. Anyway, Gromit, feel free to pop by for walkies any time you like. Your friends will always be here. Oh, that little one's quite the hero. Have to keep him out of trouble from now on. Wallace! Oh, that was a feat of incredible bravery. Oh, it was nothing, Miss Flit, really. All in a day's work for Gromit and me. Couldn't let Muzzle run off with our twitch now, could we? A man like you is one in a million, Wallace. Your courage, your... Selflessness, your aerial acrobatics. You could have been killed, yet you saved the poor whippets, apprehended the monstrous Monty Muzzle, and saved everyone's fortunes. You're a true hero to the town. Oh, um, well, uh, um, thank you very much, Miss Flit. Mm hmm. Uh, now, if only I could find the piece I that... I uh... feel a little awkward asking you this, Wallace, but I was wondering... With a bit of elbow grease, I'm sure Gromit and I can have this up and running again by Christmas. Wallace, I... I have a proposal for oh, you. Oh, I wonder where this goes. Oh, Wallace! Uh, yes? A proposal and a ring! How, how oh, shocking! I beg your pardon, Miss Flit. Oh, and so polite. Now, calm yourself, Felicity. Will I, Felicity Flit, marry you, Wallace? What? Now, pull yourself together, Felicity, my girl. You mustn't rush into this. I'm honoured that you would have me as your bride, Wallace. But. I must think it over. I shall give you my answer within the week.
Dear Gromit, I uh, must stop eating cheese last thing. It's given me terrible dreams. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, last night, I dreamt I'd accidentally become engaged to our neighbor, Miss Flit. Oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine? What's this? Oh no, lad. So it wasn't a bad dream after all. It's a real life flipping nightmare. It's all coming back to me. At the fair, I found that lug nut and she thought it was a... Oh my kitty aunt. Talk about matrimonial misunderstandings. You've got to do something, Gromit. Uh, no. I've got to do something. I must go and speak to Miss Flit at once. I apologize and explain it was all a terrible mistake. I'm sure Miss Flit will understand. She'll probably be relieved when she learns I wasn't proposing marriage after all. It's not as if we've much in common. <laughs> well, I suppose there's nothing for it but to, uh... <clears throat> Oh, Major Crump. Yes? Ah, morning, Wallace. I've come about a professional matter of the utmost delicacy and secrecy. You have? Oh, wonderful. Uh, step into my consulting room and tell me all about it. Seems I'm going to be tied up for a while, Gromit. Uh, on business, uh, why don't you go and put your ear to the ground and find out how the land lies next door? Great Aunt Prudence, you came so quickly. Of course, Felicity. An urgent summons from one's only living relative and heir to one's fortune can mean only one thing. Man trouble. Now, who is the blighter this time? I'll box his ears if he's been toying with your affections. Oh, no, no trouble as such, Aunt Prudence. But, well, there has been an important development on the matrimonial front, which... Pardon me, Aunt Prudence. I think I spy an ugly little intruder. I positively loathe fungi. Come, let's go inside for a cup of tea. Have you come, my old child? Man trouble always makes me hackles rise and my petticoats fluster. Although we had golden retrieval, no answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumb screws on her. I can identify the object perfectly well. Oh, oh excellent. I suppose we can start hunting for clues with my super clue snooper. Capital idea. Uh, still... It's not going to be an easy job. No, it isn't. It's going to be deuced difficult. That's why my colleagues and I are turning to you. We only work with the best. Oh, uh, uh, well, very kind of you to say so. But I won't stand for any monkey business. a little. Tinker? Yes, um, inventions and such like. A handyman? Well, you'll obviously have to put a stop to the inventing. Certainly not in the house. Can't be tolerated. Oh, oh no. Far too messy and intrusive. Hmm. 
well, I think you've told me all I need to hear. And so? So long as he doesn't leave his contraptions lying around all over the house, he sounds a very suitable suitor. So our engagement has your blessing? I don't see why not. Unless... Yes? Unless, of course... Well, he's not... He's not a member of that... Place, is he? That appalling country club whose name alone makes me shudder. You mean Prickly Thicket? Oh, yes. Oh, heavens, child, you know our family history. We flits have never associated with those dreadful Prickly Thicketers. Oh, you needn't worry, Aunt Prudence. Well, this isn't the Prickly Thicket type. Morning, Mr. Paneer. Constable Dibbins. Delivering the mail as well this morning? Aye. Posty's off sick. He's got the mumps and I've got the ump. Sorry to hear that. Her Majesty's mail must be delivered. And PC Ernest Dibbins has never shrunk from duty, even when such duties aren't even part of his blinking job description. Here's your post. Ah. Couldn't help but notice the coat of arms, Mr. Paneer. A prickly thicket, isn't it? Happen. So, you remember then? Hmm? Oh, aye, aye. Practically my second home. Is it now? That's a very interesting coincidence. I was just saying to myself the other day, Ernest Dibbins, it's time you joined a... Oh, my! Excuse me, Constable. What are you staring at? Get along now. Back off. Caught him trying to nick your letter. The important one from <clears throat> Prickly Thicket. Oh, that's only the envelope. I've got the letter here. Not bad news, I trust. Oh, no. Quite the reverse. It's my turn to propose a new member. Is it really? Well, I never. It's a heavy responsibility. Not everyone's cut out to be a prickly thicketer. The candidate must be a gentleman of impeccable character. Someone who's always there for a friend in need. A pillar of the community. And, of course, a sportsman. Going to be a long search? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the ideal candidate might be, uh, somebody who's very close to you. Oh? Aye. Somebody who's right in front of your nose, in fact. Ah, yes. Of course. You mean Mr. Wallace, my near neighbour and one of my best customers. Wallace? He's no blinking sportsman. He don't know one end of a golf club from t'other. Well, that's true. And he's hardly a pillar of the community. Like... Like who? Mr. Paneer. My dear. Mr. Paneer, who watches over this town centre like a shepherd watches his flock? Who sees to it that everybody stays on the straight and narrow? Oh, you mean you? <laughs> but don't forget, you forgot to find me after that business with the bad bangers last month. Only on account of me soft heart. It's me only failing. But don't start getting ideas. I'll let you off with a warning once, but just once. Of course, Constable. Now, you better start getting these crates put away. They're blocking a public thoroughfare. Oh, dear. Not more crates. Good day, Mr. Paneer. I'll leave you to uh, think things out. Out of me way, you. Don't suppose you can use a few crates of super sticky nut butter, can you? I ordered five tubs, but the daft apert at Warehouse put me down for 500. How am I supposed to shift 500 tubs of super sticky nut butter? Wait a minute. Take this home to your master. Free sample, courtesy of Paneer's produce. If you don't like it, you can always use it to fill in cracks before decorating.
nosed by order of the law, and all on account of a teeny tiny mouse. Oof, ridiculous, really. But you know Constable Dibbins, he'll let a lot of things go, but he's a stickler when it comes to vermin. Hey up, grommets! Abner, I couldn't help noticing that little item in the society section. The one about your master and Miss Flit. It's true, then. Been keeping it a secret, though, sly devils. Ooh, it's all over tip papers this morning. How Monty Muzzle's fundraising funfair was a big fake, and how a certain ice cream vendor and his dog brung him to justice. Ooh, careful with that. It's my last one, and it's reserved for Mr. Paneer. Hey, you're the mutt what's responsible for my incarceration, aren't you? No hard feelings, mate. Come here. I've got a little present for you. Pleasant accommodations, so far as jail cells go. Pillows could be a bit plumper, but I ain't complaining. Anyway, my lawyers are on the case. They ought to be out in a fortnight at the latest. It's not going to be an easy job. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. But I won't stand for any monkey business. If you don't bring me the genuine article, I'll know in an instant. Uh, no, what? That's what I need you to find out. You and that bloodhound of yours, you're a detective. Oh, Constable Dibbons seems to be taking quite an interest in you this morning. Oh, yes. We're great chums, we are. He does me little favours, and I do the same for him. Is that so? Have you got my, uh... Here. Extreme pudding. Been looking forward to this issue. There's supposed to be an in-depth feature on the merits of natural rubber grips versus synthetic... Hello? What's this? Thinking Nora. Is that who I think it is? Well, I'll be. That's our Wallace, that is. Rookie of the Year. I didn't even know he played golf. Oh, he's a man of mystery and no mistake. The constable was just saying what a rotten sportsman Wallace is. He'll be eating his words when he sees that. Yes. What you thinking, Pat? Oh, nothing. The constable's still the best choice. After all, he's been very good to me. Mm, must be nice to have friends in high places. Can't really leave these crates in the street all day. Ah, 
my good friend Panea. Glad to see you're doing your civic duty. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't want to presume on our friendship. That's why I've always respected you, Mr. Paneer. Never want to take advantage of powerful friends. You know, when push comes to shove, the law must be obeyed. Honor, duty and golf. That's the prickly thicket motto. And a fine motto it is. A motto I could easily live by if, say, someone were to invite me to join the club. Say no more, Constable. I thought it over and... Pinky neck! Crikey! What kind of trick is this? Trick? Uh, no trick. Just a little mix-up. Optical illusion. If you'll just turn the other way for a moment, I'll... Turn the other way? I am an officer of the law, Mr. Panea. But our friendship... I'm sorry, Mr. Panea, but vermin's vermin. And vermin trumps friendship every time. So, that's how it's going to be, is it? Constable Dibbins, uh, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, what brings you to, uh... Here, package for you. What do you suppose this is about? It's from Prickly Thicket. Well, I never. They're inviting me to become a member. And they've even enclosed the club's official tank top. Imagine that, lad. A country club. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, we're going up in the world, eh, Gromit? <laughs> Miss uh, Flit. Please, Wallace. You needn't be so formal. Not after yesterday. Call me. Felicity. Uh, yes. Uh, about yesterday. I did leave you hanging in suspense, rather, didn't I? <laughs> Not in me. But I do have an answer for you now. Uh, you, you, you do? I couldn't take a step of this magnitude without first consulting my great aunt Prudence. And you'll be delighted to know she has given us her blessing. Isn't that wonderful? Her only caveat. <laughs> and it's almost too ridiculous to mention. <laughs> is that she forbids us to marry if... <laughs> if you're a member of... <laughs> Reject the sticky bigot that at ball of cursed cricket. We tell other sports to stick it. Golf for us is just the ticket. Hurrah! Hurrah for prickly thicket! Brother Wallace is duly sworn in in co conformance with prickly protocol. Devil if I care why I had to be Wallace, but what's done's done. Welcome to the club, Wallace. We await the opening whack. Swing that club, you tube! <laughs> Stop in the name of the law! I hereby announce that in violation of municipal bylaw number 486, as relating to sports and social clubs, use of, this club is to be closed forthwith. Bylaw state, and I quote. Every registered golf and country club must be in possession of no fewer than one fully functioning golf course. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, my lord. Pardon if I'm a bit, uh, shaky on the upswing, but are you saying that uh, we don't actually have a golf course? Not at the moment, anyway. Had one once, 
dashed fine one it was, too. But uh, the deed was lost. Somewhere within the walls of this club. Some little time ago. 1649? Rotten year. It's a long and terrible story. It's history. And as of tomorrow morning, prickly thicket'll be history, too. Enjoy your last day at the club, gentlemen. Well, there's only one thing for it, I reckon. Like the booby bobby said, let's enjoy our last day at the club. Capital idea. Perhaps I can get a game of chess in before tea. I still need to work on me cushion technique. Uh, pardon me, but... But PC Dibbins is going to shut Prickly Thicket Golf Club because it hasn't got a golf course. Cheek. And it hasn't got a golf course because the deed proving its existence is lost. Yes, deed. Aye, that's well, right. then, there's nothing for it but to find the deed. Easier said than done, laddie. Prickly Thicketers have been searching for centuries. Impossible quest, Wallace. Impossibilities are our speciality at Golden Retrieval. Of course. Now I remember. That's what I hired you fellows to find. The deed to Prickly Thicket Golf Course. Me clue finder. Ought to come in handy for finding clues. Could this be a clue? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges and made the impossible shot is worthy to pocket the porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. Master the Ganges? Does that mean the river? Or could it mean it? Could it mean what? Nothing. Just a silly superstition. I'm still missing a clue or two. Ah, time to tee off. Oh, who am I going to humiliate today? Well, this now is it. Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Turn, Wallace, unless you want to throw in the towel. Pack a club. It's your turn, so take a shot. You can swing from the laddie's tee right there, or the lassie's tee down there. For you, I'd recommend the lassie's tee. Are you daft, man? Swinging a club like that in a game like this. Try it again with a proper iron. Giving up, eh? I'll take that club back if you don't mind. You give it your best shots. Not your fault, you're hopeless. There's bound to be a clue nearby. I say, that one's a rum'un. Aye, that one were Goodman Wetless. Him and his evil hellhound gimlet. Ah, uh, pox on the pair of them. It's them for purse in the predicament we're in today. Really? Aye, for when the devilish Duchess Flit were seizing the golf course and planting flowers on it, my poor Grandpa Rory were desperate. He loved his prickly thicket golf course, like a wee wifey. But he couldn't save it from Flit's men and their terrible tulip bulbs. 
So when they snatched the course from him, robbed him, they did. He hid the deeds to the land, hoping one day to reclaim it and restore it to the noble cause of golf. And that were his biggest mistake, hiring them two buffoons to help. You mean Goodman Whitless? Aye, and Gimlet his devil whelp. Local clockmakers and jacks of all trades they were. Grandpa Rory hired them to build a security system to protect the deed. Well, they built it all right. And made a dashed fine job of it, too. Brilliant. Inspired. Schlitz men did their damnedest, but they couldn't disable the system. And nor could anyone else, including Goodman Witless. Thanks to him, the deeds are still locked away in the walls here somewhere, guarded by his tick-tock state-of-the-art security system. Well, uh, I've done a bit of tinkering myself with security systems. Uh, do you know how this one works? Not a flippin' clue. You need three keys to switch it off, that's all I can. A gold one, a silver one, and a porcelain one. And these keys, uh, where are they to be found? Search me, pal. They're well hedged, too. Got security systems of their own, they say. If I could just round up all the clues in the vicinity, I could begin to unravel this mystery. I say, that face looks familiar. Gonna see how? Unless you were round about these parts 400 years ago. That there dusty old dowager is Duchess Flit. Her family owned much of the land hereabouts in those days. And that chappy sneaking out the back that were my great, 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 great grandpa, Lord Rory McBiscuit, come down for his holidays and missed the last coach back to Scotland. I do see a slight resemblance. Aye, he were a bonny lad, and a great one with the lassies. The Duchess couldn't get her fill of him, but as you can see, he cared for nubbit mucking about in a golf course. Twas Grandpa Rory who built Prickle, I think it. And uh, what did Duchess Flint have to say about that? Oh, threw her in a right rage, it did. Had our men seize the course by force. Aye, and that's when our troubles began. I can't make a proper start on this job till I found all the clues. Eureka! A clue! The golden key shall only be obtained by him who earned it. The golfer who, without a clue, took up the game and learned it. To hook and slice is never nice unless ye have direction. A book depicts in stages six the order of perfection. Aha! I've got it now! You have? Rook to pawn three! The prickly thicket anthem always brings a tear to me eye. I'm still missing a clue or two. What's this? Behold the foolish puppy dog, he keepeth very busy. He seeketh for the silver key, and spinneth till he's dizzy. The hours pass, he stoppeth not, in daytime nor in nighttime. Methinks he'll findeth not his prize, until you see the right time. Lincoln, Nora, this is a riddle and no mistake. <laughs> Call that poetry, Wallace. I think it's a clue, Major Crumb. Either that clock's wrong or I am. Hmm. Springs could do with a bit of tensioning. 
Nonsense. Clock's on thicket time, that's all. Clock could do with a bit of minor maintenance. What? Tea time already? So it is, so it is. Thank you, my good man. Here's something for your efforts. Time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. I'm wearing my lucky golf socks today. Lucky golf socks? What the devil are lucky golf socks? The pair with a hole in one. A sock We a hole in one! <laughs> looks different somehow reflected in this mirror. Clock could do with a bit of minor maintenance. This clock seems slightly cuckoo. Hmm. Now then, I wonder... Crivens! He My has found it! He's found it's it! It's a silver key! Can you help me decipher this clue, Mr. Paneer? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges? Shh! It's a story I first heard at my grandmother's knee about a secret golf grip that men have devoted their lives to discovering. Oh, that's all stuff and nonsense. The Ganges grip is an old wives' tale and nothing more. Fancy a game, then? Blinking egg? By thunder, man! That's not cricket! And it's not snooker, neither. Major Crumb, you've no wish to see Prickly Thicket closed down. Heaven forbid! So perhaps you could help me recover the deed? Helping others? Out of the question. Against club rules. Clever workmanship. That there's our brass butler. Built by Goodman Witless in 1648. 
Give it up, man. You're never going to find that deed. Don't you realize prickly thicketers have been after it for more than 300 years? Yes, but they didn't have what I've got. Pig-headed optimism, you mean? How do, Wallace? How goes your first and last day at your new club? Super sticky nut butter. Uh, afraid I can't quite make out what you're saying. Miss has had some of that Mr. Bernier's fancy nut butter. Now she can't open a gob. Oh dear, sticky situation that. Ha ha ha! I know. Wonder if he's got any more. <laughs> Couldn't you see fit to spare Prickly Thicket, Constable Dibbins? Quite devoted to the place, ain't you? Considering you only got sworn in this morning. It's only the... well, the club has such a long history and a... Aye, an history of decline and fall, and blatant discrimination when it comes to new members. I beg your pardon? They don't know what they missed out on, passing over a crack golfer like me. I could have put Prickly Thicket back up map. I could have showed them that... Showed them what? It wouldn't mean anything to you, Wallace, but plenty of clubs are killed to have a member who knows the... the Ganges grip. Take tea today, lad. Prickly thickets on a bit of a sticky wicket. And only golden retrieval can save the day. Grab our detection kit and let's... What's up, Chuck? Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> My grandniece is a tender-hearted girl, Mr. Wallace. She hates to see a man ruin his life. Uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Mrs. Uh... It's Miss Flit, actually. And I make it a rule never to shake hands with individuals who belong to certain organizations. <gasps> <laughs> Golf is a barbaric practice, Mr. Wallace. Those caught in its snares inevitably descend into squalor, destitution, and madness. It's all there in this little booklet. Save yourself, Wallace! That stamp's not been franked. I'll just... Uh... Attend to your guests, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> a glass of milk? Makes a change for the sort of tipple you imbibe at your club, I'll venture. Very good. Drink your milk. At least that's a wholesome activity. <sighs> Do you think it will restore his senses, our prudence? Always hope. <laughs> Oops, 
I dropped me eavesdropper. Always handy to have a spanner to hand. I've enjoyed our little chat, Miss Flit. Oh, and a great pleasure meeting you, Miss Flit. Uh, but, uh, moustache? Please, try to turn your life around, Wallace. Uh, awfully pressed for time, Gromit. <laughs> Would you mind attending to our guests? Hmm? Could we have a clean handkerchief, please? Shouldn't you be sipping cocktails at this hour with all your new friends at the club, Wallace? A master of the Ganges grip, eh? Oh, you've got hidden depths, Constable. That I have. And seems how nobody seems to appreciate them, my depths are gonna stay hidden. As a crack golfer, Constable Dibbins, perhaps you could give me a pointer or two. I'm still a bit new to the game and, uh... Here, give me that. You're holding it all wrong. You've got to... Ah, I see. Very clever. <laughs> uh, clever? Think you can trick an officer of the law into divulging the Ganges grip, do you? Um... Well... Seems your club's about to close, I'll show you anyway. Now watch closely. There ya. Got that? Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's an unconventional detecting procedure, uh, but it would be very helpful if I could dip the handle of me golf club into your sticky nut butter, if you'll permit. <laughs> I don't follow. Here you are, Mrs. Gabberly. This ought to do the trick. Oh, I can talk again. Now look what you've done, Wallace. And I'll have a few choice words for you tonight. I wonder, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, would you mind awfully if I, uh, dip the handle of my golf club into your sticky nut butter? If it'll help you with your detective work, help yourself. I want nothing more to do with the stuff. Much obliged. Now then, about the Ganges grip, I was wondering... You're holding the blinking club upside down. Give me that. The trick is to... Hey, think you can steal me secrets, do you? All right, take a gander at this. There now. Catch that, did you? What trick are you trying to pull, Wallace? Take your pigging club and bug off, Wallace. I haven't got time for all your sh shenanigans. Much obliged, Constable. Reiki O'Reilly, this is most irregular. Oh, <gasps> the Ganges grip. I told you, Paneer, there's no such... By heavens, he's a of and key. Not 
about a hole in one. Time to tee off! Now, oh, who am I gonna humiliate today? Wallace, now is it? Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Does he do it, you ask? Talent. Sheer talent. Not really crickets to make you keep playing, Wallace, but if you're set on it, there are the clubs. How many strokes you reckon it'll take him to get off the tee? Show us your best, Wallace. See that? By egg, the chairman's missed his shot. No, I never. It were the rubbish club what missed it. Well, your turn. Pick a club. Here comes the fiend of the fairway. Gonna swing from the big boys' tee this time, are you, Wallace? Did it again? He missed another shot. Um, something's not right. What's going on? All right then. Which club are you going to use? Stand back, everyone. The pro's going to show us how it's done. Step up to the D, Wallace. Wallace sunk the ball. No, he never. Uh, it's a trick. He, uh... Crevens. Crikey. Oh. The golden key. Oh, the, the golden key. key. Porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. Gold key, gold lock. The 
looks like a match. It's the deed. Hmm. Well, it appears to be genuine. So you see, PC Claude, Prickly Thicket has a wee golf course after all. I see. And where is this land exactly? Well... Mm, uh... If you can't even establish that, gentlemen, I don't see how... Gangway! Gangway! Used to be in reconnaissance, don't you know? Damn hand at topography. Let me see now. Bit of a rise to the north. River bisecting the 11th fairway. Grove of oaks to the west. Interesting. What, what, is, what it? is it? Naturally, some of the landmarks have disappeared in the intervening years. But if my guess is correct, the 18th green is located precisely on the spot of ground now known as... 62 West Wallaby Street. Well, I'll be. And it's not just my house that's in danger. If Chairman McBiscuit gets his way, the golf course will end up covering most of the... But I'm still jiggered if I understand why you're playing golf through the middle of town. If I win the chairman's tournament, I'll be named chairman of Brickley Thicket, Mrs. Gabberly. It's only the club chairman who can call off the wrecking ball. But why is the chairman's tournament got to be played here? Well, as the deeds show, Mrs. G, we're standing on the site of the original Brickley Thicket golf course. You see, it's all very logical if you've stopped to think about it. Chairman McBiscuit sinks his butt, moving him to 20 under par. But let's face it, Pat, you haven't a prayer. Oh, I'm not chucking in the trilby just yet. I've still two holes to play, remember? And I've got one clear advantage. The greatest helper a golfer ever had. Me remote-activated auto caddy. Watch this. Uh, 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 here, Comet, how do you like to man the controls for a while, eh? <laughs> Get away with you. Give up new while you're still behind. Have you not been humiliated enough? Not by half. Uh, which way to the next team? Well, let's make things interesting at least. Two holes left to play. The wee short hole starts here. And it ends oh, right over there. What a shot! All in one for Chairman McBiscuit. He's on fire today, ladies and gentlemen. Now he swaggers to the 18th tee. The long hole starts right here. And it ends. Oh, by it, what the Bobby Dazzler. Clean out of sight. Hey, Paneer, where's it going to come down then? Let me see now. The 18th hole. Yes, that would be uh, 62 West Wallaby Street. Oh, yeah. No, you can play the two holes in either order. Play them both at the same time if you like. First man to finish, the pair of them wins the tournament. What do you say? I say. Uh, uh, that's a very sporting offer. I accept. Right then, I'm afraid I haven't got time to hang around here and watch you muff your shorts. I've a victory party to get to. You'd best follow me back to the 18th green, Paneer. You'll not want to miss commentating on my match-winning putt. Hmm. Now then, which hole shall we tackle first? Let's give the short hole a try. Oh dear, that's going to be a tough shot. 
a spectacular shot, ladies and gentlemen. Spectacularly bad, that is. Straight into the sewer. Another stroke of misfortune for the underdog Wallace. Nothing for it but to take the plunge, eh, lad? Not exactly a picnic in the garden, but at least it's dry down here, eh, Chuck? Uh, now to locate the ball and chip it back out. Shouldn't be too difficult a task. Oh, dear. See anything resembling a ball, lad? Uh, besides mushrooms, I mean. Hmm. It's in retail, say. Mr. Paneer spends all his time announcing about Duncan, when Wallace is just as important. Almost. And we're back, broadcasting live from the Prickly Thicket Chairman's Tournament here at beautiful 62 West Wallaby Street. If you're just joining us, I'm Mr. Paneer, and I'm here with top-seeded player Duncan McBiscuit. We're on the green of the 18th hole. At least, uh, we think this is the green for the 18th hole. To be honest, we're having a right old to-do trying to find the actual hole. Are you positive this is the spot? Well, I copied me notes straight from the old deed. Thirteen lengths southwest of the tree, it says. Maybe you're measuring with the wrong club. There's only one official prickly thicket measuring club, and this is it. <coughs> yes, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The thrilling finale to a thrilling contest. Stay tuned and you won't want to miss a moment of the drama. Oh, listeners. It isn't over yet. Not till the ball goes. You're not taking this measuring club. Not till I've found the hole and sunk my putt. How's Wallace doing? He's at about... He just... Uh... That's a good question. I'd better check on Wallace. Me listeners won't want to miss anything important. Shrooms? There, there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. There he is, and there's no polite way to say this, down in the sewer, flailing about with his clubs in the filth. And they called him the Rookie of the Year. Who would have thought Wallace would end up down there? Yes, sir. It's happened, just as I said it would. He's finally hit rock bottom. And only I can save him, his angel of mercy. I'm coming, my poor, addle-headed, golfing fool.
still is a beautiful day up here for the rest of us, ain't it? A beautiful day for a golf outing. This is Mr. Panier, broadcasting live from our very own town center, bringing you every thrilling deep. Oh, there you are, Gromit. No luck down here, I'm afraid. If only these pesky mushrooms hadn't... Wallace! It's fled. So it's true. You finally hit rock bottom. As great Aunt Prudent said you would. It had to happen, I know, but oh, so quickly. No matter. Your angel of mercy has come for you. I will lift you from this place of degradation back into the light. I'll wipe your burning brow and nurse you back to health. I'll surround you with flowers and music and mushrooms. Ah! Oh, Sophia, get me out of here. Oh, you poor thing, you've had a fright. Everywhere, everywhere, mushrooms. Come up to the flat, love. I'll fix you a nice cup of tea. I'm not sure I know what to make of that, lad. Do you? Don't move the ball, Gromit. That's cheating. That's the club with the Ganges crib. I'll try anything in a pinch. That sent it in the right direction, at least. Too bad about gravity. Hmm. Golf Avalis. Down there in the sewer, taking stroke after stroke. Whack, whack, whack. But getting nowhere fast as hope fades for an even faster. A single tear trembling in the corner of his eye. I tell you, listeners, in all my years as a radio commentator and follower of this noble sport, I've never known a game of golf more tragic. Which club to use? Uh, oh, what do you think, lad? Well, it's about time. It's in the cup, ladies and gents. Malus has sunk his ball. Bringing his score down to just... Did they see... 198 to 213? You know, Gromit, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this game. I'll take the controls now, lad. strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street, which one to choose? Ah, me blistering iron. Oh dear. 
here now. This would be yours, I presume? Depositing non-postal material in Her Majesty's post boxes against the law, I'll have you know. See, it doesn't happen again. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, what do you think, lad? Here, go. Whatever did she run off to? It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Let's try the bouncing rock. Pity the flag isn't in the post box, eh, Gromit? <laughs> To play the ball from where it lies, I reckon. Oi, Gromit! Any sign of the ball yet, lad? This ball! Oh no! This hallway ain't big enough for the both of us! You didn't see that! And neither did you! See what? He appears to be, yes, ladies and gents, volleys? Club to use. It'd help if I knew where the hole was. He squints, he licks a finger and tests the wind, he stoops to examine his lie. Now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? Seen any hidden cups about, of the sort that are sunk in the ground, that you're cut into? Here comes Wallace, the key does. Ah, me joke. Oh, this is a good one. I say, I say, I say. Might surprise you to hear it, but I'm. 
I'm a scratch golfer and all. You? A scratch golfer? That's right. I write down all me good scores and scratch off all the bad ones. And scratch off all the bad ones! <laughs> What are you up to, lad? Blinky and Laura, the 18th hole. Drop that. Do something from it. Another try? All right. What's this? You did it? Ladies and gentlemen, Wallace has completed the 18th hole of the ancient but rediscovered prickly thicket course. And considering Chairman McBiscuit still hasn't even located the 18th hole. I hereby declare Wallace winner of the Chairman's tournament and the new Chairman of Prickly Thicket. It's true then. Indeed it is. The long reign of Duncan McBiscuit has come to an end. All, All hail, hail Chairman, Chairman Wallace. Wallace! Oh, uh, uh, no need to make a fuss on my account. Oh, but there is, Wallace. Heard the entire game on the wireless. This is a new beginning for Prickly Thicket. Aye, an era of peace and goodwill and justice for all. Right, Wallace? Uh, well, uh, that is, uh, yes, uh, I certainly hope so. As Gromit will attest, I've always been very Gromit. No dogs allowed in the club, lad. You'll have to wait outside. Now, for my first official act as chairman... Three trumpets for all? Uh, no, Major Crumb. My first official act will be to tear up old Roaring McBiscuit's deed and to save West Wallaby Street from the bulldozer. Yeah, of course, jolly good, jolly good. You carry on, Wallace. Where is he? Where is that wee bogan bump watch? Uh, you mean Chairman Wallace? He's around the corner, tearing up the deed. He cannot do that! Oh, but he can. Tournament's over, and he won it fair and square. But you're forgetting about the sudden death round. Sudden death? Aye, the round where I make sure he meets a sudden death. No. Let me at him. Don't, oh, don't touch him. Him. Don't him. Don't him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't him. For violation of local bylaw number 682, which prohibits the feeding of Polyporus pilus, commonly known as the ball shaped mushroom Tuscurus calinensis, or your coming a garden grey squirrel, and 
as the offence took place on prickly thicket property, have no choice but to... Knock it up, knock it down and bury the remains, and we're here to see you do your duty. That's right. Prickly thicket has caused quite enough trouble. Kindly point me to the chair. Well, it is too late to say hello. Who's been looking about with me oscillating fan? It don't oscillate no more. Suppose I'd better join them. Miss anything important, have I? Well, uh, I haven't actually done anything yet. As you can see, we're packed like a pressure cooker full of sardines. And I wanted to discuss our options before... Discuss? Poppycock, are you a waffler or a leader, Wallace? Well, uh, uh, that is, I, uh, 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 uh. Wafflers, waffle! Leaders, X! It's a trap! Everything's under control. I'm sure there's a simple way to deactivate the lock. It's a sand trap. Uh, no need to panic. Uh, uh, I have an idea. Uh, but to put it into effect, I'll need to shift over to the window. Uh, Major Crumb, could you slide into the empty space? Flanking maneuver, eh? Brilliant strategy. Mr. Paneer, if uh, you wouldn't mind sliding over. Like this? You realize, Mr. Paneer, we could have avoided this outcome if you'd have chosen a different candidate for membership. You're in the club now, ain't you? Satisfied? Pardon me, Mr. McBiscuit. Could you perhaps shift your weight over a bit? I'd like to shift my fist onto your hooter for getting us into this scrape. Dunk, please. All right, lassie, all right. Uh, hello, Felicity. Duncan? Why'd you do it, Felicity? Why'd you want to throw me over for an umpty like Wallace? I'm not interested in Wallace anymore. I'm not interested in any man who... golfs. I but I'd have given it up for you, lassie. You would? Aye, from the moment you first brushed me off, I can't you were the one for me. I tried to put my feelings into rhyme, but, oh, I'm no good with words. Your eyes are as deep as the murkiest look. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. You remember it? Oh, of course I did. Your eyes aren't too shabby either. Major Crumb. One step ahead of you, Wallace. That's it. Move into striking range. Uh... Miss Flit, I know it's tricky, but if you could just move. move... Chance will be a fine thing, young man. I'm completely boxed in. <clears throat> now, Mr. Paneer, if you move over, I know. Now, uh, Miss Flit, if you could please move into... Next to you, a golf-playing fancy man who toyed with my Felicity's affections? Certainly not. But Aunt Prudence... A lady must preserve some standards of decorum. Constable Dibbins, if you can move over... I'll give the orders here, if you don't mind. And I'm ordering myself to move over. Could you shift over a bit, Mrs. Gabberley? Oh, I'll have a go. Uh, 
now, Miss Flit, if you could simply shift your weight, uh, Flit. uh, into the empty space. This is intolerable. Miss Flit, uh, I wonder if you could just wiggle over, uh, into the empty space. Oh. Mr. McBiscuit. Ah, oh, shit, you're giggy, I'm shifting. Mrs. Dabbley. Say no more, Pat. Miss Flit, would you mind moving over a bit? Where would I go? Constable Dibbins. Perhaps I will. Perhaps I won't. Now, would you mind sh Bit. Um, Miss Flit? What an impertinence! Miss Flit, could you, uh... <sighs> Come a little closer. I want to give you a hug. Uh... Mr. McBiscuit? What do you want now? Uh, could you possibly move... Move where, exactly? to bring it up at a time like this, Mr. Paneer, but there is an outstanding balance on that pudding magazine. I can't reach my wallet at the moment, Mrs. Gabberly. Of course you can't, love. We can settle up later. Ah, and here we are. Oh, much obliged, everyone. Now I can put my plan into effect.
Phew! Thanks, lad. Close friends are a fine thing, but that was a bit too close. Well, why people are so keen on country clubs is a mystery to me. Then you meant what you said in there about quitting Prickly Thicket? For you, a little sprig of healing. Just terror. a second, Felicity. I don't oh, think duck. I've been introduced You're to the so man. Romantic. Sand bath, most invigorating. Cleans out the pores. Reminds me of the good old days in the Sahara. You know, Constable Dibbins, I hear on Grapevine there may be another uh, opening at Prickly Thicket. And I've heard a certain grocery shop may be reopening soon, too. <laughs> well, old chum, I'd say Golden Retrieval's first professional investigation has gone rather. <coughs> Wallace, this is rather awkward for me to say. I, I, I mean, I know your feelings about me. Oh, uh, you do? You see, in the heat of adversity, I've discovered that my heart belongs to another. Oh, uh, right -o. So, please, don't say anything to prolong our agony. I must therefore return this to you. Oh, heck, lad. That's two close shaves in one afternoon. I don't know about you, but I could murder a copper. Oops. Hang on just a sec. Time for some cheese, methinks, Gromit. What do you fancy, lad? Eat Amal Wensleydale. <laughs> 